Hello, and welcome to episode 130 of the Casual Try Hard Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm James. And, you know, with Watsi doing a set every two weeks, uh, we get another video episode. Ta-da, you get to look at us again. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hey. Uh, <laughs> best beard in esports, and then sure. unshaven guy. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll take it, but uh, PK reminds us every single video that... Uh, LSV thinks he has the best beard in esports. Oh man, is that where that came from? LSV said that. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I, I do think my beard's pretty epic, but it is. It is. So, uh, we are going to go over the Magic Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realm set. Sure. I mean, sure. it's the new set, so we're going to talk about it. Um. So, if you want to. Let us know what you think about the set. You can tweet at us at Casual Tripod. Yep. You could also hit us up on Facebook at Casual Tryhard MTG, or you can drop us an email, show at Casual Tryhard MTG.com. Um, if you're looking to pick up any singles from this set, uh, that's how I will be engaging with this set because I don't think I'm going to buy any sealed product from it. The set really isn't speaking to me. Um, I'm probably just going to pick up some singles, um, but I'm going to do so using our TCG player affiliate link tcg.casualtryhardmtg.com that way it's like i'm paying myself it's great um you guys can do the same thing if you want to pick up any singles uh follow that link and anything that you purchase after following that link we'll get a percentage of to help keep the show going uh, if you want to support us a little bit more directly you can do so at patreon.com slash casual um we would really appreciate it sign in there throw in a couple bucks and let us know how we're doing. You get access to our show notes before the show goes live. Um, I'm going to post up our video pre-show for our patrons on there. Hopefully they'll enjoy that. And kind of like I've been saying all summer long so far, um, this summer we're doing a learn to play series. Um, that's a little bit different content than we're used to doing. So like the normal content that we do is some of that's going to get pushed into the pre-show. And then like our main episode is going to be, you know, some of the learn to play, uh, playing in paper, finding an LGS, that sort of thing. Um, so if you want access to some of that other stuff, the newsy stuff, the um, like deck content sort of stuff, um, that'll be in the pre-shows. Uh, hop on over to our patron, uh, patreon.com slash casual tryhard MTG, throw a couple bucks in the pot and you'll get access to that. Um, that's probably just going to be for the summer. I'm sure at some point, once we finish this series, we'll, we'll go back to our regularly scheduled programming. Uh, but for now, unfortunately, that's the way it's got to be. So, um, we also have our YouTube channel, youtube.com, uh, slash casual tryhard MTG is our YouTube channel. Uh, you can also just search casual tryhard MTG on there. It'll pull us up. Um, did you, have you been recorded in any of your draft videos or I've been doing them all basically as I watch Gavin. Yeah. So no, I've been doing them all on my iPad. I will yeah. do a couple. I don't know if you're going to get 25 uh, videos <laughs> a day, uh, uh, one a day, but I will, I'll do a couple. Yeah, that's all uh, right. We talked about it in the pre-show. This set is fine. Yeah. I think I'm over it already. At least the limited environment I'm over. And I don't know that this is going to make a super big impact on standard, at least not until rotation. So... I don't really know where I would play any of these cards. Yeah. I mean, I've got some ideas, but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And like I said, I'm not going to buy any sealed product for this set because I'm not in love with it. So I won't be doing, I'll probably still do a pre-release kit for the show, um, but I'm not going to do box openings for it because I don't want to put that kind of money into it. Voting yeah. with my wallet, so to speak. Um Fair. So yeah, check out our YouTube channel. There'll be some stuff there. There's some older videos there. Um, at some point, we're going to do this uh, other idea that we've got. Then eventually that'll go up on YouTube as well. Um, also, make sure to check us out on Discord. There's a link in the description for our Discord channel. Um, there's also a link on our social media. Hop on over there. Let us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what you want to hear us talking about, what you want to see us do videos about. Yeah. Go over there. Check us out. So, one thing real quick I heard mm -hmm. today, and I was like, this can't be right. Guess when the next set comes out? Uh, August? So, uh, well, the next standard set, uh, like, what is it, Werewolves or whatever? 
Yeah. Sep- September 8th. Yeah. So pre release is in August. Oh, it's like it's the like, last I week of know. August, right? Is it? I, think I, so. I heard September 8th and I was like, that's in like two months. Yeah. Like this standard set's only around by itself for two months. That's absurd. Yep. So, yeah, if you don't like this one, don't worry. There's another one coming down the pipe. <laughs> it's like the Here's- weather Myrtle oh. Beach. Just wait a minute and it'll change. Uh, yes, totally today. It's yep. crazy. All right. So, we are we are in the Forgotten Realms. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've got we got ourselves some mechanics. We do. All right. Let's see here. Okay, I've got to make the slides work. Professional. Ha. I am. Ooh, Ta-da. that was nice. <laughs> So the first mechanic are the dungeons. We have dungeons. Um, this is kind of a weird thing. They there are three dungeons and they live in your sideboard, but don't take up slideboard sideboard slots. Um, they said there will only ever be three of them. So there's no more in the commander precons. There's no more coming. It's just these three. And there's a mechanic in the set that, I mean, I guess it's just called dungeons, right? There's no like, it's it says adventure. venture into the dungeon on the card, yeah. but there's no like keyword, right? No, I think venture into the dungeon is the like game mechanic word yeah yeah um so when when you play a card that tells you to venture into the dungeon you will either go to the next room in the dungeon and sometimes there's a choice like on uh, lost mine of fandelver here the first choice is just scry one but then if you venture again you either get to create a treasure token or make a one one goblin so there's a choice there to make yes um Every time you venture, if you're not in a dungeon, you're going to pick a dungeon and then go to the first room. If you are in a dungeon, you're going to go to the next room. And you can't ever go backwards. So I don't understand how that's like going in a dungeon. You can go backwards in a dungeon, right? Hey, you're a brave adventurer. You're not chickening out and turning around. You're just I mean, you would if there was something shiny in the corner. Ooh, piece of shiny. Hey, that that's why you get the treasure token because you yeah. found the piece of shiny. I just yeah. say you're like, I went to the dark pool and then I saw the shiny in the mine tunnels and I wanted to go back. <laughs> no, you're in the dark pools now. It's not how it works. Yeah, I mean, could you imagine how horrific it would be? Oh, it'd be if, terrible. Not only did you have to like decide once you're in the goblin's lair, do I want to go to the storm or the dark pool? But do you want to also go back to the cave entrance? <laughs> Uh, uh. Yeah. so we talked about this on the pre-show i feel like the mine the, the mines the dungeons just like throw the brakes on the game mm-hmm. like every time someone ventures like go make yourself a sandwich because it's going to take them like a minute to like decide what to do mm-hmm. uh even when there's only one option like the interface is fine, but like I try to be mindful of being quick, and I always forget to like, and on my iPad, like I have to hit the room. Yeah, and it's like yo, arena. I'm in the yawning portal. Guess where I'm going? <laughs> of the dungeon level, can we just like make it so I can hit OK? No, yeah. I've got to do two clicks. Like no, just just don't even make it so I can hit OK. We know what I'm doing. Right. Just like scry just me do one. It. Yeah, just do it for me. Like, I'm not getting the, like, visceral, like, well, I'm feeling like an adventurer. I'm clicking the dungeon level. Yeah. It's like, no, move it along. Keep the game snappy. Yep. So, the biggest thing is kind of how little these effects are. Yeah. That's kind of my complaint, too. Is you're doing this thing, and it doesn't have a... There's not a huge payoff for putting in like eh creatures yeah. that have ventured into the dungeon. Mm-hmm. Now, for a lot of things, it's just like this is the, you know, this is how much we get for like uh, a raised dead cost. Yeah. And they just stapled venture in the dungeon on it. Mm-hmm. Right. So some of it just doesn't really change a whole lot. But yeah. like you, you do the thing three or four times and you're like, oh, I got the draw card. Right? Like, it's like, oh, I scried one, made a goblin, put a counter on the goblin. So now it's a 2-2. And I got to draw a card. 
So I did four these four game actions, and it was a two two that scried one and drew me a card. Like, come on, yeah, it was a lot of work for not a whole lot. It is a lot of work, and like most of these effects, like the cards that they're on are costed appropriately to have an additional effect on them. Yes. Like you're not going to play a five mana three, four vanilla, right? No. But in this format, you're kind of incentivized to play a five mana three, four venture into the dungeon. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's like when they just throw um, like, oh, uh, like set keyword. Yeah. On like, this five mana three four vanilla is like in every set in some way, shape, or form. Maybe it's a four three instead of a three four, but yeah. it's like vanilla that has like set keyword on it mm -hmm. or set ability. And that's what all these are. Yeah. They're not like super inspired. They're just like set set word. Right. I think like where I'm going with this though is that like that card. I I feel is worse in this set, even though like it's what you're supposed to be doing because like, like I said, you can't go backwards. Once you're in one of these dungeons, you're in it until you complete it. And like some of these venture effects start as early as turn two. So you play a card that like, you know, ventures into the dungeon on turn two. Well, you, your opponent might've only had one turn and you have to decide in seven turns in 10 turns like what do you want your payoff to be and how, how do you know that on the second turn of the game whether you need to be you know in the tomb of annihilation working towards like an attrition style game or whether like you need to go to the dungeon of the mad mage and try and flip some bomb off the top of your deck yeah like how like you don't know how many times you're even going to be able to venture right like yeah so you've got two of them are it takes four to get to the end mm -hmm. or or three if you want to like you know hard mode know. yeah if you, if you want to cast pox on yourself right, <laughs> right. pox yourself cool um and then the other one's seven like you don't know if you're gonna have like you go into the dungeon of the mad mage and it's like am i gonna trigger this seven times mm -hmm. am i gonna or am i only gonna trigger it like four times right would i much rather get to the end of the lost mine so i could draw my card mm -hmm. or would i you know rather get to the tomb of annihilation so i could like get a four four if i'm right. only gonna do this like four times right and you don't know that at the when you have to make your decision yeah i mean maybe i'm playing it wrong but i don't think i've ever picked the lost mine i think that's I've... just like the safe one with like the least return for your money yeah, I pick the Lost Mine if I am, like, looking for something in particular. Like, if I play my... If I've got a six drop in my hand and I play my five-man adventure in the dungeon, mm -hmm. I want to make sure I hit my next land drop. Yeah. So, like, I'll play the Lost Mine for the scry. Yeah. Right? Um, unless I'm, like, you know, a deck that really needs to venture. Like, I always look at it as, like, at, like the first, like one or two effects yeah. and then so I'm like okay like i need this scry to try to hit my next land drop or well if i can venture again i can get this treasure token and like play my six drop a turn early right mm -hmm. i play like a four mana venture thing and i'm like okay well next turn i can like you know oh it, it triggers on attack so i can attack get a treasure token and then play my six drop yeah but, like oftentimes i don't look further down I gotcha. But, you know, for, like, the tomb, like, if I'm, like, red-white aggro and I've got a couple things that, uh, you know, that have venture in them for whatever reason, because, you mm -hmm. know, two drop with set mechanic or whatever. Right. Right? I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to try to deal five damage to you with the tomb. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that's good. Yeah. Like, like, I'll, that one I'll do, like, if my deck is uh slanted aggressively because mm -hmm. like i had i had a game where my opponent was at five and i was like well i can get in four damage and then play a venture creature and kill you yeah and so stuff like that i've done dungeon of the mad mage a few times in limited 
and it's fine like but the effects are pretty small along the way right like you do get a draw three that's good but like you basically have done nothing with all of your other all of your other things yeah like the scrying kind of adds up like the one life isn't a card one life scry one isn't a card one life scry one make a treasure still isn't a card no but like scry two is almost a card yeah and like make two one ones is probably a card yeah scry I mean, three is definitely a card and then the, the runestone caverns like exile two cards you may play yeah. one like that's literally a card that's literally a card i don't think i've ever done that one because usually like i'm like oh i need these one ones to block yeah. so try to get to the end to like yeah i think know, every time it, i've so needed the one ones yeah so it's a little it's a little weird i think that if these were standard playable mm -hmm. or playable and constructed we'll talk about that in a second but yeah. playable and constructed like you would be you would know that your deck could do the thing multiple times mm -hmm. and you would kind of know what your what dungeon you're best suited to go through mm -hmm. right so you know like oh i'm really aggressive i always just go through the tomb of annihilation yeah right because i just need the damage like it's turning all of my cards into like additional deal twos yeah great and then i get a body at the end i can attack with or you know like oh hey i'm doing big stuff dungeon of the mad mage i know i'm gonna have you know 15 cards that are gonna let me like venture right so i'm gonna go through the dungeon every time the right. dungeon of the mad mage so lsv pointed this out on the set review why is it the dungeon of the mad mage mm -hmm. and then the very bottom thing is the mad wizard's lair <laughs> why don't those match up right like i, didn't I don't even notice the, that i don't know the original D, &D book I don't, but he's like, I don't understand why they don't match why isn't it the mad mage's lair why is it, it the be. mad wizard's lair so I think that these were, uh, again, another pre-show cut here, right? I'm guessing that Ikoria came out. Mm -hmm. Everyone had a meltdown because every game played out the exact same way because everyone had an eight-card hand and always had their three-drop, their four-drop, or their five-drop every yeah. single game. And they were probably working on this set or had, like, you know, we're like right at the end of finishing it. And they were like, oh, let's turn the knobs back on these. <laughs> yeah. Because opinions we were not okay. We're scared. Yeah. We, we don't want to have a thing that you always have access to. Right. That makes all the games feel samey. Yeah. Again. So, all right. Next mechanic. Well, the, the, so the next slide is, still this mechanic still it's this a, mechanic? like an example uh, of venturing so this yeah. is nadar the selfless paladin and when he's a three drop uh three three vigilance and when it enters a battlefield or attacks venture into the dungeon so every time it enters a battlefield or attacks you get to move to the next room so that's just kind of the way the way it's templated the way that you'll see it on the card yeah now next mechanic hey yeah it's dragons yeah it's not a mechanic they just put <laughs> creature type dragon on some things that was pretty cool thanks guys i mean yeah. technically it's a mechanic because i went to the wizard's website and pulled the list of mechanics off of the website and dragons are listed as a mechanic mm. so mm. that sounds like some prbs if you ask yeah. me we have dragons some we of them are dragons. all right most of them are eh. Most of them are eh. Like they have the cycle of uncommon dragons, which are uncommons, whatever. Yeah. There's a couple. We'll talk about a couple of the other dragons in a yeah, little while. Yeah, but then there's here, but... like a cycle of like mythic dragons for each color. Yeah. That range from like, oh, this is fine to like, why has this been printed? Right. <laughs> and it's like, what, what are we doing? 
Why is this, why are these all over the place? Okay. Yeah, I have no idea. Next up, craps. I mean, uh, <laughs> dice rolls. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. All yeah. right. So, because it's Dungeons & Dragons, and even I, someone who's never played Dungeons & Dragons in his life, mm-hmm. know that you roll a d20 in the pursuit of Dungeons and or Dragons. <laughs> right? They have decided to put this on... A bunch of cards. A lot of cards. There are so many dice rolling cards. So they're templated kind of one of two ways. They're templated like contact the other plane here, mm-hmm. right, which is three and a blue for an instant. Roll a d20. One through nine, draw two cards. 19 through 20, scry two, then draw two cards. And then... T- 10 20, through 19. Oh, 10 through 19, I'm sorry. Yep. And then 20, scry three, draw three. So you have this where you kind of have like three options. Mm-hmm. And then there's the ones that are like, basically it should just say flip a coin. Right. Because it's one through nine, 10 through tw- 20. Yep. So it's like, okay. So basically 50, 50. Yep. Right. Um, so I think we said our piece last week, but magic is already a game of variance. Mm-hmm. And it's just weird to like introduce even more another form of variance. Yeah. It does kind of throw off uh, stuff we've talked about, like making and having a plan. Yeah. Because sometimes your card doesn't do what you think it's going to do. Mm -hmm. And like that is frustrating. You're like, oh, I need this 2-1 to tap their creature and have it not untap. Oh, well, roll some dice. Oh, it's just going to tap it. Oh, I guess yep. I die now. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's great. Like you said in the pre-show, it's awkward because um, like you and your opponent can both play the same card and it'll have a different effect. Yeah, right. Like your opponent can end of turn cost con- contact other plane and roll a three and just draw two cards Mm -hmm. and you can roll a 13 and you got a markedly better card oh yeah way better right like your opponent got an unplayable card and you got a perfectly playable card yeah and then if you hit a 20 you got a busted card Mm -hmm. and it's like well like that's just like not the way the game's been played ever yeah and I understand on some level there's not a huge difference, right, between like scry two and just not scrying two, but it's still like a pretty big difference, right? Like you can look at four cards on the second one, mm-hmm. like oh I need my wrath. I want to bottom two cards and then draw right. two more. I get four looks at it. Yeah. Versus like oh I hope these top two cards have what I want. Right. So or you're on like turn seven and you need some gas instead of lands and your top two cards are lands and you either like, wasted a card or you drew into some gas. Cause you scribed those two lands to the bottom. Yeah. So there's a bunch of different cards that have this mechanic. Most of them are not constructed playable. Right. I think almost all of them are not constructed playable. I think there's like one. Yeah. Maybe the, uh, the wild mage or whatever. Yeah, D- Delina. Delina. I think that's it. Like, I don't think any of the other ones are. Yeah, we'll but, like, talk about I her in a minute. Yeah, I don't think any of these are going to show up in Constructed. And, like, I don't know how much they add to the limited environment other than just being the, like, hey, this is a thing we do in D&D. That's what I was going to say, is they make it feel like D&D. Which is weird. I mean, it's almost like when you watch the little kids play Pokemon and they have their like super fancy like coin that they flip. Yeah. Right. Like we're just po- flipping the Pokemon coin. Basically. Right. It's like heads, tails, it landed on its edge. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay, cool. It landed on its edge. I guess I get to win now. Yay. Yeah. So speaking about your Pokemon coin real quick here, I do need to remind everybody that 
A spin down die is not a d20. Yes. Yes, apparently that like came out as like, this is not a legal thing. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that the pre-release kits are coming with d20s instead of spin downs. And I believe that the bundles are also going to be d20s instead of spin downs. Um, so make sure you're using one of those or like an actual d20. Don't use a spin down. So am I now going to have to forever have like a d20 in my bag? In case I'm playing someone, in case there's some like <laughs> legacy like dice rolling deck that I have to worry about. Yeah, I don't know that any of these cards are playable enough for you to have to worry about it. Fair, fair, but you never know. You never know. You never. Somebody know. might donate you a chaos, whatever the guy's name is. Oh, <laughs> the four three. <laughs> yeah, the four three. There you go. All right. Might happen. Next up. Flavor a, keywords. This was a mechanic? This was a mechanic. Site? Yeah. God, I hate wizards. <laughs> so I I hate this, by the way. Okay. Um, like there's a whole bunch of random, like a ton of cards in this set that have text in the text box that isn't flavor text and also doesn't matter. So like on Monk of the Open Hand here, it's a one mana, one, one elf monk, and it has flurry of blows. Wow. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Monk of the Open Hand. Yes. So it's some sort of description about what the monk is doing and then what the card actually does. So I have heard two different schools of thought on this okay so there's the arena deckless school of thought which is unsurprisingly this is all stupid why mm -hmm. is this here other card games have done this and they are now gone okay <laughs> why are we doing this, this is dumb then there's the limited resources LSV has been running a multi-year-long D&D campaign yeah. with all of his friends, and he loves it. Really? He's just like, Floria blows. That's a move that monks can do in the game. In D&D, this is so cool and flavorful. Like, he loves it. Because a lot of these apparently are, like, actual, like... I mean, I would hope that they are. Otherwise, they're even more stupid. <laughs> so like on one hand like this set is not for you and i no it definitely not. Our, it might not be for our listeners this is for this is just one great big like marketing campaign for D, &D to players that, to get that group of eight people over in the corner that play D, &D Mm -hmm. look down their nose at magic cards to go i want to buy a pack of magic cards yeah right and wizards is just hoping if they buy that pack of magic cards they'll get them gotcha yeah. yeah they'll get them with that get them with that uh cardboard crack yeah and then they'll have them forever yeah i don't know like most of these like these like flurry of blows these almost didn't even register to me. Yeah. Like, I just... Like, like, you didn't notice they were there? Yeah, like, just moved on. Like, I read what the card does. I'm like, cool. Yeah. At no point ever am I going to be, like... Uh, Trigger flurry of blows. Yeah, that's never going to happen. Not, yeah. not one time. Or, like, you know, whether you come upon the null camp, like, intimidate them or, like... <laughs> <laughs> or like stand and fight or whatever or fight them yeah or charge them i think is what it is and it's like you know two things can't block or uh give something plus three plus one mm -hmm. i'm never going to be like uh you come upon a null camp i choose to intimidate them <laughs> Tap, uh, these two things can't block but it's like these two things can't block we're good yeah so yeah like these do like zero for me but, like, what's funny is, is you have some knowledge of D&D. &D. 
Uh, I mean, very little, but yeah. yeah. I have less than you. Yeah. So maybe, maybe the people that don't D and D, maybe they, maybe maybe they're just like they're just not gonna look at these words and they'll just read the non italicized words and it'll be fine. Maybe the people that know D and D are gonna be like, oh, monks are cool. <laughs> I love Floria blows. Well, so. I mean, I hope these are resonating for somebody because otherwise they're awful. They're text <laughs> on a card that doesn't do anything at all. Yeah. All right. Now we have uh, the classes. These are, are actually kind of cool. I, I kind of like the classes. Um, some of them are like way better than others. Yeah. Um, I, we're not going to talk about them all. I just picked like a handful of them. There's okay. an uncommon cycle, one for each color. There's a rare cycle, one for each color, I think. And there's uh, some yeah. gold ones too. Yeah, I think there's one for each two color pair. Is there really? There's 10? I think. Oh, okay. Like I can oh, think of a couple of off, offhand. So yeah, I didn't I didn't think there was 10 of them though. I thought like there might be five of them. Maybe, maybe. I'm wrong. I don't I don't maybe, I don't actually know how many of them there are. I'm trying to think now. You might be right. There might only there might not be the because we got a yeah. red, green, a blue, black, a white, red. A white uh, blue, a white blue. Um, maybe maybe there's only oh, and a blue red. The sorcerer is one. Yeah, yeah. So maybe maybe there's only that that color pair, but not there's not a red black one. Yeah, and there's no green black one. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's only half. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the way these play out is they come in with an ability. Mm -hmm. And then you level them up, like you're leveling up your class. Mm -hmm. And each time you go up a level, you add that ability for that level, but you keep the previous level's ability. Right. So you just add more text to the card, basically. Yeah. So you start out and the card has the top box of text. Mm -hmm. Then you level it up and it has the top box and the middle box. And you level it up again, and it has all three boxes. Right. Now, the first bit of text on each of these says you can only level them up as a sorcery. This is important. This is important because these would be way better if you could level them up as an instant. Yes. Like, if you could hold up your mana and go like, oh, I don't have to cast my removal spell. I guess yeah. I'll level up my barbarian class. Yeah. Yeah, would have, be way, way, have, way, way better. Do we have the rare ones on here or no? Uh, some of them are on here, yeah. Okay, let's click over to the rare ones. Okay, so I have two. Uh, Ranger class is busted. Yeah, Ranger class is pretty good. Um, so Ranger class is one in the green. You When it enters the battlefield, you get a 2-2. Two -two. Yep, so it's a bear. It's a bear. Then you can pay one in the green, and whenever you attack, you put a plus one, plus one counter on something. It's a pretty good bear. Here. So you get the bear, and then the bear gets get bigger. The bear becomes a an elephant. I guess it's yep. a beast, right? Because beasts don't trample elephants usually do. Right. Right. So it becomes a beast, and then it becomes whatever a four four token is. Yep. And so on a big so beast. Forth. A big beast. And then level three is three in a green. You get the static ability from Vivian, Advocate of Monsters. You can look mm -hmm. at the top card of your library at any time. And you, if it's a creature spell, you can cast it. Yep. So it gives you like this aggressive mode early on. And then it gives you like your sweeper protection as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you beat down, you beat down your hands after you get swept. And you're like, all right, I'll put this on level three now. And I'll just start casting cards off the top of my deck. Yeah. Um, the other cool part about these is that they're enchantments, which are like harder to interact with for the most part. Yeah. Um, so e even if your bear dies, you still get the level two ability where like whatever creature you attack with gets bigger and yeah. you still get the last ability where you can rebuild after a sweeper. Mm -hmm. So it just stays there. Mm -hmm. Right. So they kill you. Like you go ranger class, activate level two attack for three and they kill your thing. And you're just like questy B. 
Yep. Because he beats a five five. Yep. Correct. Big boy. Um Bard class, I had I put this on here, so it's uh red green and it comes in with uh the ability legendary creatures you control enter the battlefield with initial plus one plus one counter. Mm-hmm. Level two is legendary spells you cast cost red green less to cast. This only reduces the colored mana you pay. Mm-hmm. So if your deck is full of like cheap legendary spells, you can just play them all for free. Yeah. Right. So you have like Gallia of the Dance or whatever. Oh, yeah. Just free. She's free. You have uh, Raghavan. Mm-hmm. He's free. Yep. Zerga Bell Striker. Free. Free. So any like red, green colored reg- legend or like mono colored, like, you know, just red or just green, you just play them for free. Um, it, it is worth noting that it says legendary spells. So you can cast Planeswalkers cheaper too. Red and six for free. Yep. Domri for one mana. Yeah. And then the last ability is three red, green. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play them this turn. So if you have a bunch of legends mm-hmm. or legendary things that you can cast for red, green, right? you can just like rip through your deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I pretty cool. I don't I mean, know. Five mana is a lot, but. Yeah, I don't know if this is good, but like if you can cast a bunch of stuff in your deck for free, yeah. Usually that you'll find a way to make that work. Right. So it was just interesting that it just turns a bunch of stuff that that you uh that should be powerful because it's le- they're legendary mm-hmm. into just free things. So one, okay. we we, we kind of skipped over the uncommon ones. Okay. Um I think the uncommon ones all cost one mana. Do you think that there's any of these that uh, like might see play anywhere, or any of them like close? Um. So like we have Claret Kalas up here, and it it's um like it's it enters the battlefield with the ability. Whenever you gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead. Yeah. So like in a life gain deck, like you know it can help you like turbo up to those uh, like seven more life than your starting life total, 30 life more, uh, you know, 10 life more than your starting life total yeah. quicker. And then for four mana, which is probably too much. That's probably too much. It gives you the Healy out ability. It gets the Healy out ability. Right. So when you gain life, you get to put a counter on something. Yeah. And then level three lets you like return a card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah, it's way too much, though. It is way too much. But, like, the first ability is fine. Um, Trying to think. The the druid class, you gain a life. Yeah, you gain a life when a land enters the battlefield, and then you... Get to play two lands. Get to play an extra land. And and then then you animate one of your lands. Yeah. Yeah. So, like maybe the second ability where you're like playing multiple lands but probably not yeah that one's expensive though i think isn't it four mana for the second ability oh uh, like three, I didn't three or much. four mana maybe and it was more than i thought it would be the blue one like uh wizard class when it comes into play it basically doesn't do anything here you have no maximum hand size yeah and then for two and a blue you get to draw two cards mm-hmm and then the third ability is good, but again, it's too expensive. Like whenever you draw a card, put a counter on something, put a plus one counter on something. Yeah. But it's just too expensive to do that. Yeah. I don't think any of the uncommon ones are going to get there. Okay. Like the, the rare ones, since we have these two, are there more? Yeah, oh, there's there a couple more. There we go. So, oh, oh there's Druid, oh, Druid class. classes right there. Yeah. And Druid class is two mana. It's one on the green. Must have been busted. Um, so, so fighter class I like in newer formats. Mm-hmm. So, rest in peace, pioneer. And <clears throat> sorry, that's right. So, pioneer and uh, historic yeah. as kind of um, what's it called? 
it can go get a hammer. Yeah, it's Stoneforge Mystic, right? Yeah. So it's red, red, white. When it is a battlefield, search your library for an equipment, reveal it, put it into your hand. So it just goes and finds your piece. I guess the better example is it's open the armory. Yeah. Uh, which sees play in like uh, Voltron commander decks. And I think it's seen play in the hammer decks. Yeah. Uh, and then you pay three mana and you can, your equip abilities cost two less. Woo. I mean, that could be relevant though for like toolboxy equipments. Yeah. Um, like it makes swords equipped for one mana. That's pretty good. That is. Uh, and then kind of to pair with this, the red, white, uncommon, whose name escapes me, it's a 5-3. Yeah, the, may- hammer, the hammer guy with an axe. <laughs> the hammer guy with an axe. Yeah, his name's yeah. like Hammer Smash or something, and he's holding an axe. Way to go, art direction. Yeah. Uh, but his ability is, is your first equip each turn costs zero. Yeah. Well, that's how you equip your hammer. Yeah. Right, so like, you could like fighter class, play your hammer, play him, and then I quit for free. Yeah, that's pretty good. So uh just ways to make like the red the like red white hammer time deck better in like not modern. Yeah. Uh and then like sorcerer's class, uh blue red, draw two, discard two. That effect mm-hmm. seems powerful. And then, yeah, I don't know if the rest of it is really going to yeah. matter or not, but like level two is blue red creatures you control get tap at blue or red. Only spend this mana to cast instant sorceries or gain a class level. Mm-hmm. I've heard people say like if you have a young pyromancer. Oh right, yeah, that's pretty good. Your tokens just like now they don't have haste, so you have to wait a turn. But you, your tokens can just like let you get a bunch of mana. Right, and they let you level up, so you can turbo out level three also. Which is what? Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, that spell deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of instant or sorcery spells you've cast this turn. So that's uh, Aria of Flame, right? I think, Ar- is Aria of Flame, like, does it deal three? No, I like think it's gain- the number of spells, isn't it? Okay, maybe. So they gain a bunch of life, and then you have to whittle them back down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, you know, basically gives all your spells, like, makes all your spells, like, grape shot. Yeah. Right? You yeah, just, I like, guess that's better, yeah. yeah. You're just like, oh, okay, one, two, three, so, you know, I've got to cast, probably better than grape shot, right? Because you have to cast less spells. Yeah. Right? So you only have to cast, like, seven spells or something, right? Do you even need that many? One, two is three, six, 10, 15. You need six spells. Yeah. 21. So, I mean, you know, you could, you could see it as something play out where you're like, you know, you're you're like level up your, your, uh, your sorcerer class to level three. And then you're like, okay, turn six, I'd kill you. Mm -hmm. So don't know if that's good enough, but it's interesting. Like, the first thing when it comes in does something that has been good enough. Right. So. All right. Next up. Ah. Uh, yeah. We got to, we're into the cards now. Into so the cards. So before we start talking about cards real quick, the timing of this set was odd. Very odd. We had like a week and a half of previews. And then, bam, it's on Arena. Is this how they're going to do stuff going forward? Is it always going to be two weeks in advance? I I have no idea. But, like, I mean, we didn't have time to do an episode before we started playing with them. No. Could not. the set was spoiled, like, fully on Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday. And then we had all of the cards on Arena on Thursday. Yeah. I think that it, you know... I don't know how it's going to impact like paper sales, yeah. but like you're off. I mean, it made me now. want to skip the whole set. Yeah. Like you're off limited now. So you're not yeah. going to go like do pre-release. Right. Or maybe not do as many as you normally would. I, I'm not going to do any. I'm going to buy one to open for video and that's it. Right. So that is, um, uh, that is 
probably not what their intended goal was. <laughs> I mean, I hope not. I hope they weren't trying to just run me off. But no, it's it is very different that like we said before, like the set's gonna be figured out. Mm-hmm. Right. New standard is gonna be figured out before you can actually buy the cards. Right. Which is just not great. No. Like way before. I mean, even a whole week before. Yeah, like because you know. I'm assuming sometime later this week, like probably right around pre-release, we're going to know what like the four decks you can play are. And they're yep. the four decks you could play last standard. Right. <laughs> the four decks you can play the standard before that. And that's going to be that. Yep. It's like, oh, I get to play Salt Tide Automatum. Maybe I'll put one of these green lands in. I don't know. Just in case. <laughs> just in case. Just in okay, case I need cool. a big Hydra. Yeah. Okay. There we go. That's my. Those are my additions from the new set. Yeah. Um. How do I feel about this removal spell? Is it better than what I have now? Yeah. No. Okay. Cool. So, we've established that we got to play with it some over this weekend. Is there mm-hmm. anything in particular that we want people to know as far as a limited format goes? Well, I think this is something limited and constructed. Like, okay. so. Starting with Strixhaven, we've started giving treasures to colors that don't traditionally get the ability to skip turns for mana. Yeah. Right? So, you know, think about Prismari Command. And we were like, who's ever going to pick the treasure mode? Turns out everybody. It happens all the time. Yeah. Right? Because you're getting in red and blue to jump from three mana to five mana, Mm -hmm. right? You're like, kill your thing, make a treasure, play my gold span dragon a turn early. And that was never something we had to worry about. We have this red black legend now that like comes in and makes a treasure. Right. So you can go two, four in red black. Yeah, it's weird. Which is not something that ever used to happen. So I think that like, the fact that we're getting ramp in colors that we didn't have ramp, even though it's only temporary, but with as powerful as cards are now, yeah, right? It's an scary. Extra, yeah, an extra turn with Goldspan Dragon can be the difference between winning and losing your game. Well, I mean, an right? extra turn with Goldspan Dragon in particular is like four mana. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, yeah. right? You're getting a lot more out of your, your, uh, your five mana plays than you used to and just giving more colors ways to get to those mana costs faster Mm -hmm. i think changes how you have to like build decks and think about decks yeah right like i think in like your your red decks and your you know your red blue decks you have to think about like well is there a way that like is there a treasure maker that can let me jump ahead right do i have enough ways to make treasures on three that like i want to play that I can skip my four drop slot and yeah, just, just play five drops to jump to five or whatever. And I think that's not something we've had to consider in deck building before mm-hmm. because like it with Prismari, it felt like it might've just been like that set. Now it just feels like they're going to, they're giving treasures to everything. Yeah. Like you're just going to get treasures in red, black and in red, you get blue. a treasure and you get a treasure and you get a treasure. I mean, they gave us uh, a Soul Warden that also ramps you. Right. <laughs> also like, makes oh, a treasure. Yeah. Hey, here's your two drop. Do you want to make sure you, like, cash your collected company on on uh, three? Good news. Yeah. yeah. And then gain two life off the creatures? Here you go. Right. So I just thought it was something to bring up that, like, we're, I think, entering kind of uncharted territory with color pairs that used to not get ramp mm-hmm. getting ramp but i don't know if like the treasure thing i feel like it's tied to red yeah right so it's like a red blue card and a red black card so like red's the common the thing the common treasure together. yeah the common the common color but like that's not something we're used to like red doing and so maybe we have to build our decks different to take advantage of that where cards that we would normally be like oh just makes a treasure it's like no it makes a treasure that's worth more than we were giving it credit for before 
That's true. I mean, if you look at like some of the other formats too, there was a Commander Legends card that was like a one-one goblin that made a treasure. Okay. And there yeah. was there's a Dockside extortionist is like from one of the precons and he enters a battlefield and makes a whole mess of treasures. So like maybe treasures maybe it is just something that they're adding into Red's like color, color pie. It's like a way to ramp. Yeah. So and again, like I think we have to think about decks differently because like how can I ramp in my red deck is not something that you've ever thought before. Right. Right. And maybe that makes like the Cameron special like big red deck mm -hmm. a more viable deck because you can get to your five drop dragon faster. Yeah. You can get to your big stompy thing a turn ahead of time. And that might be, you know, the difference. Or you can make like it's way easier to hit your fourth land drop than it is to hit your fifth. Yeah. Right. And your tre and your treasure is going to take care of the rest of it. Yep. So. All right. Now to the cards. Now to the cards. So this first one, I'll take I'll take this one. Okay. All right. So this is Book of Exalted Deeds. White, white, white for a legendary artifact at Mythic. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn create a 3-3 three, three white angel token with flying. So that's not the like, important part. No, but that's like Griffin Airy mm -hmm. from like last core set. Yep. Now, the money part of it is white, 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 tap. Exile Book of Exalted Deeds. Put an enlightenment counter on target angel. It gains. You can't lose the game and your opponent can't win the game. Activate only as a sorcery. So, why this matters is as soon as it's spoiled, everyone was like, wait a minute. Uh, Faceless Haven is an angel because it, it has uh, it has changed changeling. Yeah. So if I can put my counter on Faceless Haven, then I can't die. And it was like, eh, whatever. Then I watched um, uh, Saffron Olive play that deck. Basically, mm -hmm. just, it was removal, rabs, and then this. Yep. And just consistently on turn three, or sorry, on turn six was like, and you are locked out of the game. Thanks for playing. Right. Like, oh, you tapped out. You're dead in 45 turns. Yeah. So I actually I came across a Reddit thread today about okay. this deck. And there are savages out there not playing win cons. Oh, no. No, yeah. no. Why would you play a win con? They're just doing this and then, like, letting you draw naturally every card from your deck. Sweet. Yeah. That sounds miserable. Seems awful. Yeah. Like, I think as you go back in Magic's history... Yeah. This gets progressively worse. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, like, in best of one standard, yeah, the newest, the least <laughs> discreet uh, magic format, this is really good. Yeah, like, like almost unbeatable. <laughs> you can't play Cleansing Wildfire in your main deck. Right. If you get paired against Mono Red because you just lose. Right. Uh, like, oh, that card did nothing and I'm dead. Right. Right. You can't play Field of Ruin in like your, you know, mono red deck because you've got like stupid Tor brand and crap you have to cast. Yeah, I mean, you also can't really play Field of or Field of Ruin in like a three color deck. Yeah, can't do it right. And like in like mono white, you can't play Field of Ruin because like you play Faceless Havens, right? And you need snow permanents. You need snow permanents. So, like in like best of one standard this is going to just be like misery mm -hmm. like in historic i can't believe i'm going to say this goblin rune blasters here to save us <laughs> well All i mean like ponza is a deck in historic there is a deck with stone rains oh i know i know i've been stone rain followed by stupid goblin and never <laughs> got to hit my third land drop uh but yeah like this also might just be like a deck where you are doing your thing and your opponent, you know, your, your opponent stone rains you and you just like concede. 
And you like, and you just <laughs> yeah. move on to the next, and you move on to the next one, and you're like, oh, goblins! I can yeah. beat goblins. I'm playing like <laughs> I'm playing eight Wrath of Gods, and yeah, uh, this combo, cool, no problems. Got this one. Yeah, come at me, Muxus. You come at me, bro. <laughs> Take all of it. Take yeah. eighty. Cool. So yeah, this is just. I think a thing to look out for, like, on the ladder, mm -hmm. and maybe it's good enough for, like, I, I was telling you that you can do this on turn four in Pioneer. You can. Right, because of, uh, oh gosh. Mutavault. Oh, Mutavault. Yep. Right, because Mutavault. Tap, Mutavault, activate itself. Yep. Tap three planes. Same trick. Right. Now, there's probably more Field of Ruins floating around there. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Get another book. Yeah. Do it again. Run it back. Yep. But yeah, like I will never, ever draw all the cards in my deck if someone <laughs> <laughs> will not happen. Yeah, a hundred percent on that concede button. A hundred percent. My time is worth more than. Losing, I will lose now as opposed to lose in 25 minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, like, like quick mental check. Get no stone rains in this deck, yep. and, and moving on. All right, next up, Ingenious Smith. Um, okay. this is kind of a weird card, I'm sure it's like not on anybody's radar, but it's a one and a white for a one one human artificer. When it enters a battlefield, you can look at the top four cards of your library. You can reveal an artifact from among them, put it in your hand, put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. And then whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on it, but it only triggers once per turn. I forgot about that last line and started my opponent. He played a second artifact with like, where did I get a counter and, atta and yeah. attack? And you I can see him like hover card. over the card three or four times. And then I ate it with the flash two one. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. God, I was like, I was like, please tap their other creature and don't let it untap. Yeah. Stupid dice, fine. <laughs> but I will I will get to eat this too too. Yeah. I am like like this card would be great in like, you know, pioneer or historic like hammer time mm -hmm. if it were a warrior. Yeah, instead because, of an like, artificer. Yeah, because the way you have to equip for free is on Warriors. Yeah. But, I mean, it is like, I don't know, a homeless person's Stone Forge Mystic. <laughs> well, so not just that. Like, if you remember back to, like, Kaladesh Standard. Oh, uh, Glintness this Crane. This is Glintness Crane. Except, like, it gains counters instead of flying. has flying. Yeah. It's so playing with a 1-3, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it flew, but like the top part of it's the same same mm -hmm. text. So this is a glintness crane that like whose body might actually matter. Eventually, yeah. Eventually, yeah. Like I mean two or three artifacts and like the body matters. Yeah. I mean, if you're playing a like artifact combo deck, which those always exist somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Like I don't even know might... if you necessarily need like an artifact or uh, artifact combo deck though like i mean we still have ember cleave and there's yeah. some reasonable equipments like i actually kind of like the dancing sword yeah like ember cleave and mall of the sky claves yeah yeah i mean i don't know how many like you know kind of like glitness crane on more than one occasion i said to glitness crane as it resolved and should be no artifacts I built this tech so you would be good <laughs> with this crane. Why yeah. are you doing me like this? Yeah. And Glenn, this crane, you're like, Arr. <laughs> they'd show me no artifacts. I'm like, fine. Yeah. Well, as so we're like, going to point out later, we have an artifact land in this set as well. We do. Yes, please. But no, this card, I like this card. Also, yeah. isn't this just uh, screaming for like a, uh, a Mandalorian helmet altar? Oh, totally. Like, yeah. Like the, the armorer for the Mandalorian. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah. This is the way. I might uh, be able to make that happen. There we go. Or at least yep. get a sticker and yep. put it over. Yeah. Okay. Next up. 
All right, Demilich. Blue, 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 blue for a 4-3. So this spell costs one less to cast for each inch in the sorcery you've cast this turn. Mm -hmm. So it's odd that they're removing colored mana requirements. That yeah, really strange. I think it was they didn't want this going into like some random red deck. Right. Right, like, like we're gonna make this super blue, right? Whenever it attacks, you get to exile in the center sorcery from your graveyard, copy it, and then you can cast the copy. Mm -hmm. So it like gets around like Graph Ticker's Cage because yes. you're not casting that spell, you're casting its copy, correct? And then you can you still do have to pay for it though, you still have to pay for it, yes, yeah. And then you're casting it, you can cast it from your graveyard. By exiling four instant and sorceries, you can cast this card from your graveyard. This card, yes. Yeah, so you yep. can, if it's in your graveyard, you can cast it from your graveyard, mm -hmm. and it still gets the cost reduction that it would normally have in your hand. Right. Right. So this is somewhere on the spectrum of Arclight Phoenix. Right. It's not as aggressive. Yeah. Because it doesn't have haste. It also doesn't but, fly, so there's no evasion. There's no evasion, but I feel like we have found over and over and over again that if it's a reasonable body that mm -hmm. comes back from the graveyard, yep. it will see play. Yep. And this can come back from the graveyard for free. Right. Right. Like imagine like, you know, a turn four in historic where you're like faithless shock opt opt and you're mm -hmm. like get back a bird in this right that seems great right it gives you an extra thing that you want to discard with your faithless lootings yeah and like you're just going to cast a bunch of spells anyway yeah i mean if you faithless and like been two birds and two of these like you're doing yeah, pretty like, good yeah like you're just going to like make this wall of like bodies they can't deal with. Yeah. And like like crackling drake was the was sometimes in those decks. Like this could probably take the crackling drake slot and then like crackling drake be your like sideboard plan. Yep. Where you're like, all right, well Demi Lich is bad because they're like they play rest in peace or something. Right. And you well, just need that body. Yeah, now I have Crackling Drake as my like okie doke to get around that. Yeah. But you know, this might be only like a two of in those decks because like it's not gonna like you're not gonna have infinite instants and sorceries in your graveyard at all points. Right. Especially if you play, oh gosh, what is it called? Ah. Uh, uh finale of promise. Yeah. Right. Like because it exiles. Yeah, you're exiling them, yeah. Right. But you know, you could like have your you know your setup where you're like turn four you're like finale of promise cast two spells out of my graveyard cast another spell have yeah. enough spells left over to get this back and get back birds mm -hmm. and now i've got to deal with the birds and you know you leave like a shock in your graveyard and next turn it's like okay well attack with my demolich cash my shock yeah that's perfectly fine yep. so. i think this card's pretty powerful it is. It's like finding a home. But I think we just have to lean on like think about all the cards that have come back from the graveyard for free. Vengevine, Arclight, Hogak. Um Zombiefish. Uh, Narcomiva. free. Yeah, Narcomiva. Uh Prize, Prize amalgam. amalgam. They are all linchpins yeah. of decks. Think about how much work people do to get Vengevines back. Right. Now, I don't know, you know, if this, like, translates to, like, older formats, but, like, there was the, uh, that deck I played for a little bit, the Buried Alive Birds deck, mm -hmm. where you're just, like, you know, ritual, ritual, buried alive. I saw, I saw, a li I don't remember if it was Modern or Legacy, but there was a 5-0 list with them, four Demi Lich in it over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, PK was playing uh, was going to play something like this. I don't know in in modern. I think. Yeah. But yeah, I think this card is going to find a home somewhere. Yeah. 
and I don't think that place is initially going to be standard. Yeah. So maybe if these are relatively cheap and you're interested in older formats, scoop them up. Yeah, it's the time to get them. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is one you wanted added last minute. This is a last minute ad. So this is Tasha's hideous laughter. Mm-hmm. One blue blue for a sorcery. Each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until that player has exiled cards with a total mana value of 20 or more. I don't think it's very funny. No. No, I don't know what Tasha is laughing at, but apparently it makes you go crazy. Yeah. And what is Tasha? Is Tasha like a dragon? Uh, Tasha has lots of legs. Yes. I can't tell if it's like a dragon (laughs) or like a... I don't know. Anyway. So... They keep printing these three mana mill a stupid number of cards. Mm-hmm. Um, cards. So they had a wasn't Frank uh, Frank Sanity or no Frank Sanity is the enchantment. What was the 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 one from Modern Horizons? The blue 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 mill fourteen. Yeah, I don't remember. Well, they have that one. It was like mill fourteen. It was like cap. Yeah. Right. Um, I saw the reason I added this is I had saw a tweet where someone was like, just went O2 in the modern challenge, maybe three mana mill 30 is not good. <laughs> but I mean, it's yeah. not just mill because it exiles, yeah. But like, I think they played against mill twice, and I think Tasha's hideous laughter just dumpstered their whole deck, yeah. So the card's really swingy. Right, if yeah. you're playing against, um, let's say, like Blitz, mm. other than Stormwing Entity, everything in their deck costs one. Right. Like you're going to get what, 16, 17 cards or on average yeah. or more, right? Against uh, Prime Time, other yeah. than the Prime Times, that whole deck costs like nothing. It's like 35 lands. Right. Right. The average CMC, like including the lands, is pretty low. You're going to get, I've seen the math. I think that one's like 25, mm-hmm. 20 to 25. So, right. It's just a card that, while swingy, just adds to that, like, hey, I've got to cast three of these spells. Right. I got to cast Crab, play two fetch lands cast a mill 19 a mill 14 and this one hopefully is going to mill 20 and i'm going to win the game yep right or like oh you fetch to archive trap you now i'm just going to mill you out the rest of the way with two cards like it's basically you know almost mills almost like a three card combo yeah right it's like cast three drop three drop three drop win the game so this card just adds to that and should be pretty cheap yeah, I don't. I can't imagine these are going to be super expensive. Yeah, but if you are a mill monster, this is like something that goes like right in your. Uh, yeah, it's right, your time right to shine, buddy. And like it, actual mill, not like rogues mill. Like actual, like I'm not trying to like deal you damage. No, no, I'm trying right. to just make your library go to zero. Right. Also, the exile is a big deal in modern. It is. Right? If people were like putting in um, Eldrassi. Mm-hmm. They would just like put one Kozilek in their deck. Right. So they couldn't get milled out. Well, this exiles. So yeah. like, hey, cool. Cozy stops the uh, the train, but it's now not going to save you. Right. So just uh, another, another like little advantage to the, the exile clause. But yeah, this. Well, I mean, you also don't have to worry about filling up your uh, opponent's graveyard with stuff that matters. Like, yeah. I mean, you cast this against Dredge and they can mill all their dredgers and they're just gone. Yeah. Uh, or like, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about like it turning on Delirium for Dragon Rage Chandler. Right. Okie doke. Next up. All right. The Let's server get... rack. Yes. Yeah, there's an extra R in there that I didn't notice the first time around. Dear God. A server rack. Sounds good. A sir rack. The arc lich. It's a two and a black for a five five legendary zombie wizard. 
Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you haven't completed Tomb of Annihilation, return Isarurak, the Ark Lich, to its owner's hand and venture into the dungeon. Uh, and then whenever it attacks for each opponent, you create a 2-2 black zombie creature token unless that player sacrifices a creature. That part doesn't matter. It does not matter. No. He's never going to attack. He's never going to enter the battlefield. Well, I mean, I guess technically he'll enter the battlefield, but he'll never stay there. No, 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 no. All right. So James's like pet modern, uh, pet legacy deck. Yep. Is, uh, and it has a special place in my heart, is a Lauren. I love a Lauren. I, I think that's my favorite magic card is a Lauren. So your favorite magic card, which remember a while back, you were like, you should sell those. They're like 50 bucks. Whew, I'm glad you didn't. They're 100, they're 125. Remember when yeah. you told me to get rid of my null rods at $75? Oh, what are they up to? 175 Holy moly. Yeah. I was like, maybe I shouldn't have them now. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, a Lauren, two green, green for an enchantment that says basically, this says any player can cast a creature spell with converted mana cost three or less for free at any time. At any time. So, with flash. So, the way that deck wins or has won for a while, there's like some new commander card that I don't know that like I think comes in and deals two or something. Yeah, like it, that really doesn't change the combo though. It's just like a different, a different thing. Yeah, it's a little so, bit more efficient than the uh, the Strix. Yeah, than Parasitic Strix. Yeah. So yeah. it would play Cavern Harpy, and you could uh, is it pay life and then return. Uh, or no, it plays the new one instead of Cavern Harpy. The Strix is still there. Okay, I think. Okay. So I've I've seen different things. Yeah, uh, I went and looked. At some stuff. Basically, it plays a creature that bounces another creature. Yep. And when that creature comes into play, it ETBs and deals damage or drains them. Mm -hmm. So you've got to assemble A plus B. Yep. Right. You have to assemble the bouncy thing and you have to assemble the the drain thing yep with a lauren so three cards three yeah you need a lauren bouncy thing drainy thing yep a sarak is the bouncy thing and the drainy thing mm -hmm. all on one card because if you go through uh the lost minds of whatever yep right you the, just get to draw your deck well, you kill them because the third level is you gain a life, they lose a life. The middle oh, yeah, path. Yeah, yeah. So you just kill them. You just dead them. Yep. So you, instead of having to get three cards, this is your one card. Mm -hmm. And so you just do this. And I was, so I was looking at different lists and some of them are like four color so they can play recruiter. Yeah. Like they're like 80 card Yorion garbage piles. Oh no, I don't like that. <laughs> no, no, no. But I saw 80 card Yorion garbage piles. Then I just saw like the classic Saltai was just like a bunch of cantripping creatures and cantrips. Yep. Um, like you just get to cut out like the fat mm -hmm. and you just get this. And you could kind of um Right. I mean, you can use him to find your combo piece because he's three mana scry one. Right. I need my Lauren. I guess I'll three mana scry one. Right. Worst case scenario. Yeah. Worst case scenario. I think the only knock against him versus the other things is it doesn't pitch to force. True. Right. But otherwise, it's just better. Mm -hmm. So I wonder I if there's a not blue version. A not blue version of Lauren. Yeah. I don't know why you'd want to. I thought that too. And I don't know why you wouldn't want to be blue. Just because. Well, because like with this, you maybe don't have enough things that pitch to force. Like, is there what? anything that being like. um, Like a Nick fit or a Maverick shell gains you. Um, hmm. Like white, like, cause he's so big, you can't get it with recruiter. Right. 
which was like the draw to be white was all your combo pieces were recruiterable. Yeah. Well, I was like, right. But if you're in like Nick fit though, like you could ramp into, you could either ramp into um, a Lauren or a uh, Rector. Does Rector. Rector gets the Lauren. Oh, okay. Because I was like, which one, Arena or, but Arena gets Planeswalkers. Right. No, Academy Rector. Yeah. Uh, another card that I'm sure is $5,000 right now. Yeah, I haven't looked. I hope so. Yeah. I got my play set. There you go. Um, no, I just, I think this fits into that deck. You might have to do some tweaking, but it just makes it easier to compo off. Yeah. Right? It doesn't target. I don't know if right. the other ones target. I don't know if it's just like opponent loses life or target opponent. Yeah. It doesn't target. Like, uh, and as long as like you have, you know, as long as like the coast is clear, you're good. Like, I guess you have to worry about like solitude. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't double bounce, right? It's not like you can like cavern harper, you can bounce and then bounce again or right. whatever, right? So this, you're like locked into the one bounce that you get from it entering. Mm -hmm. But like, you can work around that. Like, I have faith in us. Yeah. We can figure this one out. Yeah, I mean, that like, that's a whole, that's even more reason to be like in a Nick Fit show, though. Mm-hmm. Because you get um, either Mom or Giver or uh, Sylvan Safekeeper. Yeah, I mean, Safekeeper, you could get in... And the, like, uh, yeah, you could get that well, anyway, yeah. I guess. No, I yeah, mean, but like if you're playing it alongside Knight, though. Yeah, like where, where maybe you're playing a deck that is that takes advantage of a Lauren, but then like backdoors into the combo. Yeah, as opposed to being like more all in on the combo. Yeah. But no, this I think probably finds a way there. So mm. I think dungeons are gonna at least find their way, like. There will be at least one dungeon kicking around Legacy. Yeah. Interesting. So, yes. Interesting. Interesting. Forgot about it. Interesting. Oh. Might have to be a deck that I brew. Oh. All right. Oh. This is the first time I've seen the art big enough to see exactly what it is. Okay. Cool. <laughs> this is uh, Asmodeus the Archfiend. Uh, four black black for a six six legendary devil god, and he comes with a binding contract. Oh, stupid flavor keywords! Uh, if you would draw a card, exile the top card of your library face down instead. So okay. this is kind of necropotence. Mm -hmm. um, you can pay, play. Or, uh, sorry, I can talk today. You can pay black 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 to draw seven cards. Mm -hmm. And you can pay a black to return all cards exiled with Asmodeus the Archfiend to their owner's hand, and you lose that much life. Cool. So it's like basically Grizzlebrand? It's Grizzlebrand if you had to pay four mana for Grizzlebed. Right. Right. So instead of just pay seven life, draw seven cards. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It says pay four mana and seven life. Yeah to draw um to draw seven cards um i don't know like i feel like every time there's like a draw seven it finds a way yeah it finds a home somewhere yeah um like this one is kind of touchy though i did get myself locked out of a game and limited over the weekend oh no did you not have like well, I mean, when I played it, I had like 13 life. And okay. then my opponent went like 7-6 that gained 3 life into 7-6 that gained 3 life, and I wasn't drawing cards anymore. Oh, that's a problem, yes. Okay. Yeah. So it was not ideal. So you do have to be a little careful. But, I mean, it can also completely refill your hand out of nowhere. Very true. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess there's not a way to, like, abuse... I mean, there's probably some way to abuse it, but it's not, like, obvious. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing jumping out at me as, like, a way to abuse it, but... But, 
it does seem like something that could be abusable. I mean, even if you have to like wait a turn, like just the threat of like draw seven. Yeah. Is, like they've got to deal with it right away. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even if they kill it after you like ate a card, like they can't really ever not let you get your first draw. Right. Because like if they try to kill it, like after your draw step, you just pay the black and get your card. Right. So like you can't get screwed out of that card. I mean, mm-hmm. unless, unless you only have one life. Yes. Yeah. Then mistakes are made. Oh yeah. Sad times. Indeed. Sad, sad times. Um, one of the thing, one of the cool things I've seen with this card is, I mean, not necessarily in a format that you're ever going to play, but uh, people are talking about it with necrotic ooze. Okay, because it, if he's in your bin, your necrotic ooze has black, black, black draw seven cards, mm-hmm. which is pretty, pretty sweet. That is pretty good. So that is very doable. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's necessarily like modern playable, but nah. But hey, commander people are people too, I guess. They are. They're people that don't get to play Hall Breacher anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Means uh, cheap Hall Breachers for legacy players now. Too bad about my expensive Hall Breachers. Yeah, so did I. Oh. All maybe, right. maybe the pretty ones will come down in price and I'll maybe. get some pretty ones. All right. Eben, Eben Death Draco Lich. Two black black for a 5-2 flash flying. Mm-hmm. Enters the battlefield tapped. Yep. You may cast it from your graveyard if a creature not named Eben, Eben Death Draco Lich died this turn. Yeah, what do you think about this guy? I mean, people are super high on it. It's like a recursive threat that, you know, you can play a kind of a control, like more controlling game. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, like a mono black kind of thing where you're just like a pile of removal. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, kill your thing, get back my 5-2. Yeah. All right, do it again, do it again. I don't know. It's probably fine. It seems like they did a lot to make it safe. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know like how safe it is, though. The entering the battlefield tap doesn't super matter because you're probably not like, you're, you don't want to block with this thing anyway. It's a 5-2. Yeah. But, like, it is going to trade up. Like, having 5 power means it's going to trade up and it comes back. So, I guess it, I guess it is a little safe. Um, but, like, it has flash. So, you kill something on your opponent's turn and that's kind of pseudo-haste, right? Yeah. Yeah, where um, you're, like... You also, it's, like, you're adding the cost of the removal spell to it. Yeah. So I think in formats where you have, you know, fatal push, like one and two mana removal, yeah. like this gets better. Yeah. Right. Like you're not gonna like I don't know swift end and then play this like hey, right. Here's my seven mana play. Yeah. Right. It's more maybe like attack with all my stuff. You make some trades. I bring it back. Mm-hmm. Kind of deal. Um, I also think this is kind of cute in historic with Priest of the Forgotten Gods mm-hmm. because it's fodder for it, and then you can use the two mana to cast it. Yeah. Yeah, so. that's that's good. Yeah, um, I thought it was a sweet card. Yeah, I, I agree. I I don't know. It's everyone's talked about this, so I'm trying not to just rehash everything everyone else has said. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. No, I, that's I'm I might not be like, ooh, but it's more just like, I don't want to just like repeat everything I've heard. Yeah. I have one thing I will agree with that people have said is like, how, how does this compare to, um, what's his name? Rankle. Right. Like, um, I think they do different things. Like, they, it, I realize they have the same cost, but they, they do two different things. But like, in a, in like a mono black deck. Right? Are you gonna play Rankly Boy? Or are you gonna play this? Or like, do you do like a three-two split or something? I think it depends on what kind of mono black deck you are. Like, if you just Fair. pile over removal, I think you're better with this than you are with Rankle. But if you're in like a tempo deck or some sort of attrition game, you're probably better with Rankle. Yeah, I was thinking like kind of the classic, like you know the 
the the one mana two ones that like come into play tat but come back yeah then like you know gifted etherborn like that that like you know where you go into like your three drop is in air quotes three drop is uh what's his name spawn of mayhem yeah and then you like rankle or you know this which you know i think this might be better against like a control deck Mm -hmm. this would just be like super annoying yeah like okay cool wrath your board you're like all right cool uh bring back bring it back uh bring it back all right cool let's do this again bring back the bony boy yeah did did you bring settle the wreckage in no all right cool take five yep yep so no it's very good the cube gelatinous cube uh two black black for a four three when gelatinous cube enters a battlefield, exile target non-ooze creature and opponent controls until this leaves the battlefield. Engulf. Pay. Engulf, yeah. And then dissolve. Engulf. There we go. <laughs> X and a black. Put target creature card with uh, mana value X or X exiled with gelatinous cube into its owner's graveyard. Um, so this is kind of um, Revenous Chupacabra. It or is. hostage taker, like somewhere in the middle of the two. It's, I'd say, like it is banisher priest. Yeah, but like with a giant body. Yeah, I'm trying like to. This think body of, matters, and banisher priest really doesn't. It was a two-two. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's another, like, bigger one. I, the reason I was comparing it to banisher priest or um, whatever fiend hunter. Mm-hmm. is because right they can get their creature back yeah unless you dissolve it right where big choops just took care of it and you didn't have to worry about like it coming back yeah except that gelatinous cube can close the game no very true i mean i think it's i think it's probably for next standard it could be because like you know the feel bads of i cube your thing and then it gets brazen borrowed <laughs> yeah it's awkward and then you're like oh i guess it didn't have the time to dissolve it bummer yeah. like with everyone just playing a you know two mana bounce spell yikes but yeah. no i think that it this kind of card has been good like yeah normally we see this in white right we see the the top half is white yeah Right, and those cards usually see play. Yeah, right. I mean, even like Fairgrounds Warden, a three mana one three mm-hmm. saw play at times. It did. So, like, this will see play, but I don't know if it sees play now. Fair enough. Cube. Cube. Ah. Yeah, the guy. What this guy? He's uh, one in the black. Five three. Ooh, that's a big boy. Yeah, with flash. I want to do it. Tragic backstory. Oh. Cast a spell only if a creature died this turn. He lost somebody he loved. He did. <laughs> the but poor goblin super, warlock. He got super aggro and became a five three. Yeah, are those um, like tentacles. I know. I think it's just like cloth. No. Yeah. I don't know. You wouldn't tell me they're like tentacles of sadness. I'd be into. Yeah, I don't right. know. Whatever. Um, so this just seems like a huge beater if you can like pay the cost somehow. Yeah. Right well, like, I mean, the cost is like a removal spell. Yeah, it's a removal spell. I'm, you know, the our like mythical mono black deck, right? Of fatal push your thing. Yeah. Like this. Right. I mean, you do run into the problem of like it's you play against control and it's stuck in your hand. Yeah. In like sad times. Yeah. But like, well, they could kill one of your things. Well, very true. I was going to say like, you know, but like against like a mono green deck or like mono white or something, yeah. right? Where you just have a ton of targets for your removal and you're going to yeah. like rumble in combat and then you're just like, oh, oops, here you go. Yeah, here's a 5-3. Yeah, or like, you know, I, I think I told you, I had my opponent kill 
kill my creatures, kill a creature, then like um, hit me with the uh, good game when he like active treason the guy. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Flashing Grim Wanderer, like annihilate you. Yeah. Yeah. So like just having that like huge body. I don't know. I think it, it takes work. Like in like a, maybe a, the, the more aggressive versions of sacrifice where you're mm-hmm. playing uh, what's he, what's he called? Um, the red black guy that comes in and like gets a counter every time it hits something. Oh, um, dread horde butcher butcher yeah yep right and like the more aggressive versions where you're like you know doing that or you know you're like cat oven and then your turn three is just like sack my cat play a five three oh i like that right like that like takes no mana yeah like you're gonna be sacking stuff anyway but i think you're a different version of sacrifice that like turns longer, on direct or lich too yeah and then like the longer grindier versions you're probably more aggressive yeah like where you're making better use of the five three, yeah. All right. I don't know why this is here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this one to you. Oh, you don't think this card's good? I do not. No. Oh, okay. I I thought it was a reasonable card. It's a sphere of annihilation. This is X and a black for an artifact. It enters a battlefield with X void counters on it. And at the beginning of your upkeep, exile Sphere of Annihilation, all creatures and planeswalkers with mana value less than or equal to the number of void counters on it, and all creature and planeswalker cards and graveyards with mana value less than or equal to the number of void counters on it. It's, um, what's that, uh, Pernicious Deed? Oh, I was going to say it's like engineered explosives? Yeah, that too. So I think the the difference is like with EE, you can play it for two Mm -hmm. and then keep your opponent off of two drops for a while. Right. Yeah, that's true. You you control when you pop it. Yeah. This you make them play around it. Yeah. This, like, you don't like they know that they could they just have to avoid casting their dreadhorde butcher for a turn. turn, Because it goes away. Yeah. And like, you know, they have, they can be like, oh, well, no, like I'm going to get into combat because I know I'm going to lose these creatures anyway. Mm-hmm. So let me get in and make them like block or, or something. Yeah. So yeah. like the fact that if it had like a line that was like, you may sacrifice it, yeah. maybe that makes it better where you have more control over it, where like it is just like this sphere that hangs there and looms over the game but the fact that it only looms for a turn yeah that's true right like you have like kind of a lack of control and like there are also those times where you're like you ee for zero and then pop it right away and you sweep up three tokens yeah it doesn't have that like immediacy either true right so like on one hand it goes off too fast because you'd want it to hang around right Right. And then in other situations, it's too slow. So that points. was, yeah, that was my like, like it seems neat, but it just doesn't seem like it like fits like the right, like the play patterns you would want. Same with like D, right? You play D, then it's like a will you, won't you? Yeah. Of, yeah are you pop it when pop you want you to. Not? Yeah. Where this is like, you know when it's going to happen. Yeah. But I mean, it's really powerful, but it's just that you not having as much agency as you would like. Yeah. I think hurts it. Well, I understand. Ah. Battle Clarag Goblin. Mm-hmm. All right. So one in the red for a 2-2. Two, two. This is an uncommon. We're getting we're getting the bargain bin for you. It is. Uh one in a red. Goblins you control get plus one plus zero oh, and gain haste until end of turn. Everything a goblin's ever wanted. That's right. A little faster and a little bigger. And whenever it attacks, uh, sorry, pack tactics, strangely, this is a flavor word that actually kind of is a keyword. Kind of, sort of. Whenever battle, whenever battle cry goblin attacks, if you attack with creatures with total power six or greater this combat, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin t- uh, creature token that is tapped and attacking. Yeah. So, like, I think it's a good aggressive creature. It mm-hmm. pumps out bodies. 
It does. Remember, you can, you can pump after you make your goblin mm -hmm. to grow your goblin token. Sure can. If you already have the six power when you attack, but you can get extra damage in with your goblin by pumping. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Like, it might just be a good, like, aggressive red two drop. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's like good enough to crack into like goblins. Um, I, I mean, I don't think it cracks into goblins like in older formats, but no, I, but like if there's a goblin deck in standard, like this, yeah. this goes in. Yeah. For yeah sure. No, I think it's sweet. There's a, there's another goblin in here we're going to talk about too. Yeah. Is he next? Uh, no, he's not next. They're in alphabetical order, unfortunately. Look at you using organizational skills. Yep. All right. So next up, we have Delina Wild Mage. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in the pre-show and a little bit when we were talking about dice rolling. Um, but this is a three and a red for a three, two. It's legendary. And whenever it attacks, choose a creature you control, then roll a D20. On a one through 14, uh, create a tapped and attacking token. That's a copy of that creature, except it's lot not legendary. And it has exile this creature at the end of combat. And then if you roll a 15 through 20, you create one of those tokens and then you get to go again. Mm -hmm. um, so like we were talking a little bit in the pre-show about how I got splinter twinned and limited this weekend with this card. And uh, you said that you watched a goldfish video. Mm -hmm. All right. It was like, I think it was like a stream. I just saw like uh they did like a clip that they're on that, that them YouTube shorts now. Yeah. The TikToks for old people. <laughs> uh, where the uh, fairy that lets you roll an additional die. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, they were doing in that video was copying the fairy. Yeah. And each time you copy the fairy, you increase your odds of getting a 15 through 20. Right. And eventually you just get it to the point where you will always get a fairy in an extra roll. Yeah. And you can just make an infinite number of fairies, you know, as early as like, you know, turn five. Oh, how does the client manage that? Um, Cause I've seen like, I think up to four dice rolls on the screen. Uh, I don't know. Right. Uh, I, I watched the video. I've never seen a die roll on the screen because when you play it on mobile, they roll the dice behind your card. Oh, so you can see there, like there's an animation happening. Yeah. But it's behind, like you see like a shadow or that you can see where they had put the, the die, mm -hmm. but then you never see the die. So I don't <laughs> know how they would do that if there were like multiple dice rolling, but it was showing like multiple dice. Yeah. Uh, for them but i don't know like where it like craps out hmm. i don't know if you can uh like i did it get a rotted i don't know like because the way it's worded like you wouldn't be able to stop uh it, it definitely asks you okay so it said so it may, maybe it's like maybe, maybe it did get a rotted because like the way it's worded is you just roll. Yeah. So this is probably the only playable dice rolling constructed card. Yeah, and, and even that's kind of questionable. Okay. And it's firm firm firmly in meme land. Right. But yeah, I think this this is a fun meme. Mm -hmm. Meme it up. I That's was right. going to put this together and live, <laughs> live the meme dream. Yep. I might put it together after we're done recording and yeah, see how many I, dice I can get on the screen. There you go. Break break your computer. Yep. All right. This is not a meme. This is not a meme. Flame Skull. Mm -hmm. Three one flying. Flame Skull can't block. Mm-hmm. Ignoring italicized words. <laughs> uh, when Flame Skull dies, exile it. If you do, exile the top card of your library. Until the end of your next turn, 
you may play one of those cards. So you can either cast Flame Skull from Exile. Or whatever's on top of your library. Or whatever's on top of your library. Or vice versa. Like you, right. you can't do both. Right. Um, like it's just a good, reasonable, like threat in a red deck that gives you like reach. Like you just can't kill it. Yeah, this is like a super interesting twist on the Phoenix that we typically get like from a core set. Yeah. Um, and I think this is better than most of the Phoenixes. Yeah, like if your opponent set two. Yeah. Right. And you flip a shock, they're dead. Right. right. You just kill them. Right. Where as opposed to like, oh, they like, you know, you have your flame skull, they're in like it can it comes back because it's a phoenix or whatever, right? And then mm -hmm. they play like a bane slayer, and you're like, well, uh, -uh. I guess I'm dead. Or like, you know, you were able to sneak this in, and then they like would have gained some life the next turn. But no, yeah. you just are able to kill them. Like right. you get that option as opposed to just always getting back the same thing. Mm -hmm. But like I don't know, like I don't know how many red decks are going to do better than a three one flyer. Yeah, right. And like can't block on a card that is three red, red one red red <laughs> for a three one like yeah. you don't have to put that there you're no not blocking with this card right um also i've noticed and this is like kind of unusual the cards that i'm most that we're most interested in this set are yeah. all mythics that's true right like every one of them because I, I thought this was a rare and i'm like no it's a mythic no nope, it's a mythic like uh, book of uh yeah that's a mythic the deeds that's a mythic i was like huh these are all mythics the lich is a mythic mm -hmm. all right hey it's your boy <laughs> here we go the lord to go with our goblin yes this is a hobgoblin bandit lord one red red for a two three other goblin goblins you control get plus one plus one and you can pay a red and tap it, and Hobgoblin Bandit Lord deals damage to the number of goblins that entered... Oh, where did you go? Sorry. That's all right. Uh, that entered the battlefield under your control. <laughs> yeah, why are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> this turn to any target. So you can pay a red and tap it, and you... Any target. So Planeswalker, Creature, your opponent... Um, he'll do damage equal to the goblins that entered the battlefield this turn. So it works well with Muxus. You can just dome blockers out of the way. He works good with Krenko because mm -hmm. Krenko just makes a bunch of dudes and he's a fireball. Um, in standard, he works well with his his little bo little brother there, the uh, the other goblin, the Battlecry goblin. Yep. Um, I think this thing's pretty sweet. Yeah, no, I think this is good i mean the fact that it's also a lord mm -hmm. like i think you'd almost play it for the the second ability but it's also like oh yeah by the way i'm yeah. a lord as well yeah right like if uh right like if you were playing trash master for the lord effect i think you just play this instead oh yeah it's a way better than trash master yeah i mean trash master was there i think to you know kill the a, a stray cage here and there yeah. but like this is just a better thing like by and large. Yep. So no, I think this is this is a very solid card. And like we have a goblin lord and you know we have a two drop goblin. We have like do I say one, two, three of goblin <laughs> oh this is a cobalt. Dang it's it. not a goblin. We do have it's a couple no. one drop goblins though. Yeah. They have the the one one that deals goblin javelin air that deals one yep. to blockers. Yeah. Right. But like we have the start of a goblin deck. Mm-hmm. Every so often, they try to give us a goblin deck in standard. Yeah, I don't know that we're going to get any goblins in Innistrad, though. We might have to wait a little no, while. No, that's not really a goblin plane. No, not so much. All right, so here's our kobold that I thought was a goblin for some reason. Yeah. Uh, Minion of the Mighty, red for an O1. With, with menace. menace. <laughs> get in there, buddy. Yeah. Whenever Minion of the Mighty attacks, if you attack with creatures... Oh, sorry, pack tactics... Whenever many of the mighty attacks, if you attacked with creatures with total power six or greater this combat, you put a dragon creature from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Uh, again, on, on, on the meme team here. Yeah, meme or dream. You double infuriate this guy, and you attack yeah. 
and then there's the five five dragon that gives everything double strike. Yep. That's uh the turn to uh bingo bango deto. Yep. In standard. Um yeah, it's not gonna happen very often. No. We had some requests to talk about this card, so I figured we'd talk about it and we could mention the uh magical Christmas land, but I, I don't like this card. Like you need land, you need two lands, yep. the minion, two pump spells, and the dragon. And- and the dragon. So you need six cards out of eight. Yeah. Like, I mean, in standard, if you put any dragon into play on turn two, you're probably in pretty good shape. Yeah. So, the, like, I don't think it has to be the double strike dragon. Like, if you put a uh, the treasure dragon into play, like, I think that's still fine. Yeah, gold span, or I was going to say yeah. the, the new 6 6 dragon. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, it gets the job done. Yeah. And but, there's, like, there's like more. Isn't there a green spell? It's like a one mana green spell that gives plus three, plus three also. Oh, yeah. From this set, it's like one green mana, and you get to make something uh, a one three, a three three, or a four four oh, or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, or an O four. A one three. Hexproof turtle, a one five reach spider, or a three three trampley boy elephant. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so there we go. So now we can make them a three three, and then infuriate. So it's like six pump spells. Yeah. Uh, you were asking a lot from our boy, but uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's one of those things that like this is a deck that. You put together for F and M, yeah. And you run after you do the thing. You run around the room and you high five everyone because you did the right. thing. Because you did the thing, and then, and then you go home happy in last <laughs> place. <laughs> yeah, you go home happy <laughs> with your O three, right? And your you collect your pity pack. Yeah, your significant other's like, how'd it go? I did the thing. Yeah, I went on turn two, and, she, and he or she will be like, cool. Yeah, how did the rest of the night go? Oh, I got stomped. Right. But I did the thing one time. Yep. Yeah. So it seems fun, but not very good. Not very good. Now this card, this could be good. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this card because this was one of the very few cards that I posted up like in our chat for this um, spoiler season. And like, I didn't really hear anybody talk about it. And so, I think this card's kind of sweet. So it's Wish. Yeah. Two and a red for a sorcery. You may play a card you own from outside the game this turn. This is somewhere between Burning Wish, Legacy Staple, mm-hmm. and like Granted and Masterminds Acquisition, Pioneer Staple. Yeah, well, again, if that format exists, come back. Right. Uh, right. So, right, it it has the downside that you have to play it this turn. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can't like burning wish. You can't wish and get something for next turn. Right. But if you're storming off, right, it gives you if you have a bunch of mana. It gives you more options for things to get. For sure. I don't know what those things are that like uh, Burning Wish doesn't get. Mm -hmm. But it lets you go get other things, which could be useful. Well, this is only the second wish that lets you get lands. Oh, true. I mean, that's what I thought this was good for. Was getting lands okay? Yeah, you Let- you can get silver bullet lands. You can get your fourth land drop. You can get man lands. You can get dark depths. Come on now. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, as I said silver bullet lands. Dark depths <laughs> is a hell of a silver bullet. As as a as a silver missile, I just yeah. just get everything. I mean, some no, I- some of the versions of that deck were playing living wish, and I realize this is you know a more expensive living wish, but. Mm-hmm. I mean, get- if that deck 
if that deck wants to be like I feel like that deck could be red for Renin six. Mm-hmm. Right. And we like you just get grindy. A, yeah, and you just get grindy and you can play a much longer game. Yeah. Right. I mean, this could be like Lands has all of their bullets in their deck from what for like gamble and life from the loam. Yeah. I mean, a lot of time with lands, you're like sideboarding out lands because you don't want them. Yeah. It's not like you're pulling them in from your sideboard post board. You're just taking some out post board. But if you could have a sideboard that was that you could like, you could play wish, Mm -hmm. get the lands that you need in game one. Mm-hmm. That like sometimes you would cut, and then also have access to other other spells that you might want in your sideboard. Like that could be useful. Yeah, right. Where where maybe instead of playing whatever thirty five lands, you play thirty one lands, four wishes, and then you have more access to things out of the board. Yeah, right. For those so... things that are really like sketch. What do you think about this in some sort of uh, like primetime Velocut Dryad deck? Where, what are you going to get? I, I mean, any of those pieces. Yeah, I mean, you get primetime with, uh, what's it called? Um, Summoner's Pact. Mm-hmm. Right, so that like, right, Wish makes primetime cost nine. Yeah, that's true. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, in like blue red like storm mm-hmm. where you could like build up a bunch of mana and then kind of like you do in uh legacy, like wish for your win con, right? Because in yeah. uh, uh TES, they don't play yeah. any win cons in the deck. Right. You gotta go get them out of the board. You gotta go get them with burning wish. Yeah. Well, here this is one more mana, but like you make you generate a bunch of mana, and then you go get, you know, uh, you're like, is this is this a burning wish game, or sorry, is this a a, a grape shot game, or is it a uh, uh, an empty of the war shatter game? storm, or a shatter storm game, right? Like, okay, I mean, what if you had, what if you like had, you know. Uh, grape shot in your deck mm-hmm. right and like you played like a wish and a first day he had a wish and a first day of class in your sideboard yeah and then right you have you know goblins you have empty the warrens grape shot in first day of class mm-hmm. and you get to the point where you have like i guess it would be 10 mana yeah no nine right where you could like you know wish go get first day of class and then first day of class, and then play empty the warrens. Yeah. Right. You play three warrens main, and then you just are able to go get your your first day of class to just win the game on the spot. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, like on, and that's like what you know, couple rituals, this first day of class, and then grape shot. Like that's five spells. Like yeah. you didn't need that many spells, and you kill them. Right. Right, you make that's true. And you make 10 2 2 goblins like right now. Yep, that's game so, over. Yeah, so like Wish might find a place in like Storm. Mm-hmm. I think it's cool. Yeah. It's the uh, like the most um, universal, yeah, the one of the most universal wishes that we've had printed, and like it's in the correct color, and it, I think it's costed appropriately. I just thought about like show and tell, right? Yeah. The builds that used to play Cunning Wish. Yeah. Right. And you were playing some garbage stuff in your sideboard because you needed them to be able to, you needed them to be instants, right? For Cunning right. Wish. Right. Cause you'd like, um, it was like you'd omniscience and you would Cunning Wish. Yeah. Now you just have whatever you want to cast with your omniscience, you just wish for it. Right. Right. That's, that's real good. Really good. So, like, wish for a Carnage Tyrant. <laughs> whatever, right? Sure, wish for whatever. A, wish for a Kozilek. Yeah. Like, like the, you know, the, the one that draws you four cards. Just wish for yep. that one. Yep. 
okay, I'll find something else to cast. I'll find my Emrakul. Mm-hmm. Wish for your Emrakul. Not that you'd ever take one out of your deck. Right. <laughs> that would be All a right. mistake. Yes. Don't do that. Next one. Yeah. Circle of Dreams Druid. I'm going to sit back. Okay. This is green, green, green for a 2-1 elf druid that is Gaia's Cradle. So you tap it and add a green for each creature you control. Um, I honestly don't know how much this is going to see play because like the elf decks already have this on a lord. You have a uh, elvish arch druid. Mm-hmm. So like, I mean, it might see play in decks that aren't elves, but elves kind of already has this. And this is nowhere near Gaia's Cradle. Like, I, I think in a small, like a green deck with small bodies, your guys are already all going to be elves. And Elvish Arch Druid is just better. So See, I, this is this is not where I thought you were going to go. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't look, really like this card that much. Okay. I was under the impression that... Um, at least in historic, right? Mm-hmm. Even if this isn't a full four of, giving that deck like Arch Druid five and six. Well, you have Marwin for that. Like Marwin's better than this is. Disagree. Really? So you play Marwin on two, mm-hmm. right? And then you play two more elves. She taps for three, right? Mm -hmm. This taps for four, right? This lets you company that turn. Mm -hmm. Right? So you go turn one elf, turn two, three drop, elf, elf. This taps for four. Marwin taps for three. Marwin's also a legend, right? You can't stick two Marwin out there. Well, right, but that's why you play it as Ars Druid 3 and 4 and not Ars Druids 1 through 4. Or Ars yeah. Druids 4 and 5, five and or 5 and 6, yeah. Numbers are hard, yes. Yeah, sorry. I don't know, like maybe... Uh, so I guess I hadn't thought of Marwen as being the extra one of these. But like the fact that she gets big kind of matters, but kind of doesn't because eventually just everything's huge. Yeah. Right? And... Also, like if you like, drop this- Mar- Marwin's good, like in the middle game, though, like before it gets absolutely huge, it's a lot less fragile, like it can win combat by itself. Yeah, but if it's like the if it's the last elf you draw, yeah, right? yeah, then it's not great. Then it's not great. This is still good, mm-hmm. right? And like the number of times I've just lost to a turn two heritage druid, yeah, like I feel like that is like. Marwin doesn't seem as scary. Maybe it's just because I haven't seen it as much. Right. But like this, I feel like I'd be as scared of it as a a heritage druid. We're like, oh man, if I don't kill this, they're going to have like seven mana next turn. I'm going to die. Well, I mean, I don't think you play this in modern elves at all. Probably not. Like I, I hadn't even considered this for modern elves. No, I was just thinking historic. Well, they don't have heritage druids in historic. Not heritage druid. I'm sorry. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Arch Druid. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So, Arch Druid. Like, Arch Druid was way scarier to me than Mar- Marwin has. And this just seems like another Arch Druid in that deck. Um. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Like, it's not a Lord, though. It's not. But the like- Lord text on Arch Druid is important. And Marwin, I, I know it's not a Lord, but it's it's still adding to your, like, cumulative power and toughness. I think the the difference again is like I haven't played like elves in modern in like forever. Yeah. Right. But like just from a historic context, like yes, the the fact that Arch Druid is a lord matters, but what matters more is the turns where it taps for seven mana. Yeah. And then, you know, it doesn't matter that it's a lord because uh it lets you just activate uh stupid Allosaurus Shepherd. Yeah. And all of your things are, you know, five. Well, they're six sixes when you have out Arch Druid. Yeah. But they're five fives if you had out this. 
you're still dead. You're yeah. still taking a million. So I don't know. Like, you know more about elves than I do, but just seeing extra heritage druid, arch her- druid. again, arch druid, yeah, uh, seems good. Yeah, I I don't know that I agree. Okay, I don't like. I don't know what you would take out of the deck for this. Um, I'm not going to take out the imperious uh, prefect. Okay, and that's like the only other three drop in the deck. Yeah. I'm not taking out any one or two drops for it. I'm not taking out company for it. No. Fair. So I don't like I don't I don't know where you're gonna make the room. The uh like the Lord effect I think is more important than having two more massive mana producers. Fair. So um yeah, it I really wasn't super high on this card. I know like there's been a lot of people that are kind of high on it and maybe there's a home for it outside of elves, but in elves, I don't, I don't think you play it. Gotcha. So. Ah, yeah, this is your boy. Yeah. Prosperous innkeeper, one in the green for a halfling citizen. Ooh. When he enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. And then he's a one, one. And whenever mm-hmm. another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Hmm. So. That's not typically a green effect. Um, we it, had Essence Warden. Essence Warden. I was going to say, there's, yeah. there's the, 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 they color shifted yeah. something, Essence Warden, like something to Essence Warden. Was it Soul Warden became Essence Warden? Yeah. Yeah, it was they, white. Essence Warden was green. Yeah, but so th- was that them saying that they should have made it green? No, that was um, like in Future Sight or whatever, like yeah, when they were messing thought... around with a color pie. Okay. So, um, one. That's where we got uh, Pyrohemia, like the red uh, pestilence. Yeah. And, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, the, the white deal three. The white deal three. Yeah, like one white deal three to target creature. Um, it's like I don't white know that hole. card. Uh, crap, I forget what it's called. Anyway, so um, Sunlance. Is that it? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, okay, okay. So, one, this nerd just ramps you mm-hmm. for no reason. Right. Why, why are we making him ramp you? Um, I think this fits in the, you know, the green, white, like life gainy decks, Mm -hmm. right? Like, I think this can have a home there. Like it's hard. I mean, this guy's probably better than that. Uh, like the two mana two, two that does the same thing. Right. I think the ramp is more important than the extra power Uh, and toughness. The two mana two, two. Oh yeah. 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 I I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's better than that. Yeah, I was gonna say it's uh, like in like green white angels, like mm-hmm. it's kind of hard because like the other two drop that comes that comes to mind is like uh, youthful Valkyrie, and that card's yeah. just silly. Yeah, but the fact that this is another way to get you to like company on three, mm-hmm. and it's also doing the other game plan of gaining you life. Right. Right. Like I think that that is. All things in its favor. Yep. Um, I know that Arena Decklist had this as like their third or fourth card, like from the set. Oh, really? Like, yeah, it was really high up there. It was in wow. their top ten, and I think it was wow. in the top half. And I was like, "Really, this little guy?" And like, it, I see it. It has a lot of synergies, but I think the treasure is really important. I think, yeah, like, like we said before, like I think that the treasures mean more than we have given them credit for. Yeah. Right. Like you play this and you know you're gonna have three mana on turn three, even if you kept a two lander. Mm-hmm. Right. Like you know you're gonna get to cast your next angel or your yeah. you know, your skyclave apparition or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's also a bunch of like random um synergies for gaining life in green black uh-huh, from yeah. Strixhaven. Like Dina works with this thing, and we still have Vito and Standard that works with this thing. Oh yeah. There we go, yeah. Those are also good points. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think this is just one of those cards that's going to like float around and be around. 
because it just it does a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I think it was just a one one that gained a life when a creature entered the battlefield. It's not good enough. Yeah. If it's Wily Goblin, it's not good enough. Right. But both of them together. But both of them together make it so it's good enough. Yeah. Also, think about Ixalan. Red, red for a one one vanilla <laughs> that gives you a tr uh, gives you a treasure. Yep. Two and a half, three years later. Yeah, it's one of the green. You can you can splash out some stuff. That's no big deal. Oh, it gives you a treasure and then has additional text. Right. And it's soul okay. warden. Yeah, and it's soul warden. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. All right. Hey. Hey, it's your boy. Yeah, I didn't read this card in limited today. <laughs> of myself. Uh, I think it's still pretty good. Yes. Or Orcus? Orcus. Prince Orcus, Prince of Undeath. X two black red for a, five a weird casting cost that has flample flying and triple. Mm -hmm. All right. So when it enters the battlefield, you can have other creatures get minus X minus X until end of turn. Uh, very importantly, you lose X life. Yes. We, we learned that the hard way. Or you can turn up to return up to X target creature cards with total mana value X or less. From your graveyard to the battlefield, they gain haste until the end of turn. So it is a way for you to sweep the board mm -hmm. or a way for you to recover from a sweeper. Mm -hmm. Right? In like a mid rangey black red deck, right? Like it's just your, your sweeper and your closer. Yeah. I mean, it does everything at that point. Right? And like, X can be zero. You can just make this a five three. Flample. Yeah, and be like, all right, deal with this. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, it it, you know, three black red, right? It's gonna kill our prosperous innkeeper. It's gonna kill uh seasoned hollow blade. Yep. It's gonna like pick off all the little X ones that are running around. Yep. Uh so it's just really flexible, right? It, it runs the game from just like beater to like sweeper and win condition all in one card mm -hmm. to like, oh, I need like, you know, seven hasty power on the board. Well, I guess I can do that too. Yeah. Also, like, I guess the return up to X target creatures with mana value X or less, right? Like, so are the... So the X's are the same, right? So mm -hmm. if X is one, you get one creature with mana value one. If X is two, do you have to target up to X? Okay. Yeah, so it's up to. Target. Okay. I was like, do you have to target two, but then only bring back the two drop? But no, you have to. Okay. I'm I'm smart. Okay. So yeah, this just kind of does everything. And it's I mean, that's a body. that's a powerful effect though, because like they gain haste, so they're going to crack in that turn, and you yeah. don't have to sacrifice them. No, they're just like normally down. stuff that gives you haste or like is tacked onto another reasonably playable card. They go away at the end of the turn. Yeah, no, this just stays. They just stay around. Yeah, it's so, awesome. Yeah, this card is great. Yeah. Now this one's a rare, right? It's, it it's is. like this feels like it could be a mythic. Absolutely. But I guess we don't have. Any I gold. mean, it feels more mythic than uh, Flame Skull does. Yeah. For sure. But I mean that might be for limited though. Like, can you imagine if Flame Skull was a rare and just you came ran into a deck with like three of them? Yeah. <laughs> My deck wasn't good, but I drafted eleven rares in one draft. <laughs> Did it. Did it. All right. Okay. Skeletal swarming. I'll let you take this one here. I think this card's sweet. It's okay. a three black green for an enchantment says each skeleton you control has trample attacks each combat if able and gets plus x plus o where x is the number of other skeletons you control at the beginning of your end step create a tapped one one black skeleton creature token if a creature died this turn create two of those tokens instead okay so this thing is kind of like assemble the legion you remember assemble the legion from like 
it was Revnica. Slightly, it was slightly before my time, but I remember what it, I know what it does. Okay. Um. Well, that was like a control win con. Yes. Like that. That's how those like Jeskai control decks closed their game out. Was they just eventually stuck and assembled the legion and killed them within like two or three turns. Um. This is kind of the same thing. Your control deck is going to look different because you're probably going to be like Sultai instead of Jeskai. Um, mm -hmm. But this could absolutely be a win con and a deck like that where you just like stick this and eventually you're going to end up with a bunch of rather large skeletons that are crashing in and either trading with things that your opponent has on the battlefield still or getting in there for some damage. Um, I actually had a limited game over the weekend. It was my only... Uh, seven win draft that I did over the weekend had skeletal swarming and two of the four mana lords in it. Okay. And it was just disgusting. Every time I stuck this thing, I won the game. So, like a similar legion, though, you made one token, then two, then three, then four. Mm -hmm. Right. This only ever makes one or two. Right. But they get bigger. So, like, they scale the same because they all pump each other. Okay. So, right, if you if you make the two, you're attacking mm -hmm. for four. Right. Right, but then if they both die, you just get two again. Yeah, correct. But right, they're, so still, like they, they're still attacking for four, though. Well, there's, there's still two ones when they attack. Yes. Right, so like if your opponent has two three threes, like this doesn't do anything. It just runs to two ones and two three threes. Yeah. So, like it's like assemble the legion got so much wider yeah. that your opponent could never ever 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 have enough creatures. Yeah. But no, I mean you could. I could see this like you know, if you could keep the board clear and just set like one skeleton. Mm -hmm. You know, like one, if you got like, once you get up to like three skeletons, I yeah, think then it's like a big safe. game. Yeah. yeah, then you're fine. So it's just getting, getting able to get to that critical mass of like three. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, if you like, you know, if you had other skeletons somehow, you know, or, you know, a faceless haven. Right. Right. Then, then like, you're like, oh, hey, my faceless haven's huge now. Yeah. Get in there, buddy. That's true. That's a big faceless haven. It is. All right, what else we got? And they get trample. Oh. Oh, they do get trample. Oh. Yeah. This thing. Yeah, these things. Um, I really don't care about these things. I don't think that they're very good for the most part, but I'm sure yeah. people are going to want to hear about them, so I included them in the list. These All are right. the, uh, the Vecna artifacts that okay. you, like, assemble Voltron and you get a Vecna. Gotcha. So we've got Hand of Vecna. Mm -hmm. So this is a three mana equipment with an equip two or equip pay one life for each card in your hand. And at the beginning of your turn, beginning of combat on your turn, equipped creature or a creature you control named Vecna gets plus X, plus X until end of turn where X is the number of cards in your hand. So you just make something a big, big. Yeah. Um, and I do think this is just like, a reasonable equipment i agree um i got clowned by this thing over the weekend okay yeah my opponent had like six cards in hand and just like paid six life and then his thing was huge for the rest of the game and annihilated you yeah uh, it's like it's like play the the two mana two two that gets menaced when it's equipped and then yeah. turn three you're like this pays six <laughs> life bash good yeah. luck Yep. You got two turns. I hope you find something. Um, so the next one is the Eye of Vecna. It's two mana for a legendary artifact. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and lose two life. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you can pay two. And if you do, you draw a card and lose two life. That so is kind of like Bad Bob. Bad Bob, yes. Yeah. Not and an idea. Have the Book of Vile Darkness. So black, black, black for a legendary artifact at Mythic. Mm -hmm. Beginning of your end step, if you lost two or more life this turn, 
create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. And then you can tap and exile the Book of Isle Darkness. And artifacts you control uh, and artifacts you control named Eye of Vecna and Hand of Vecna. Yep. And create Vecna, a legendary 8-8 zombie god creature token with indestructible. It gains all triggered abilities of exiled cards. Mm -hmm. So basically, it just becomes all of these things smushed together on an 8-8 body. Right. So it's um, an 8-8 that gets big at the beginning of combat on your turn and draws you a card and hits you for two and makes a zombie. Yes. So the uh, the uh, Aya Vecna conveniently loses you two life, mm -hmm. which makes you a zombie from the book. Right. So there we go. Synergies. Synergy. Um, let's see, uh, well, again, watching uh, Saffron Olive, he played a deck like this, like trying yeah. to make this thing happen. Uh, again, I didn't get to watch it. I was on parenting detail, but mm. I think he, I think he saw Vecna once. I think, yeah. I think he, he was going to keep playing till he hit Vecna. So I think he hit Vecna once. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like it's a lot to go all in on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty not interested in this. But um, I bet you the same people that wanted to make Brazilla and um, Eldritch, Eldritch Moon will want to make Vecna as well. So, yes. Um, all right. So, what's up next? Uh, next up, we have the Manlands. Um, there's oh. one for each color. Some of them are better than others. Um, I think the red one is pretty good. I agree. Uh, the red one taps for red. Uh, they all have the same starting text. Um, if you control two or more other lands, they enter the battlefield tapped. So they're like one land worse than the Scars Fast Lands or mm -hmm. the Kaladesh Fast Lands. And the red one is three and a red until end of turn. It becomes a 3-2 red goblin creature with whenever it attacks, you make a 1-1 one -one goblin that's tapped and attacking. Cabos. I like this one. I don't know how feasible this is, but it feels oops, sorry. It feels like um you could almost play this in like mono red prison. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. It, I agree. It, it doesn't quite get under it's hard because it doesn't get under a bridge. It's not like Goblin Rebel Master that's gonna make a one one right. it's under a bridge. But like if the board's clear and you have a couple cards in your hand, like you know, you could be in a situation where you just keep two cards in your hand and each turn you attack with your 3-2 land, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't slow you down early in the game. Right. It might not be a four, but you can play like two mm -hmm. to just have like an extra way to win the game. Yep. Do you I like any other ones? Um, Like we have Cave of the Frost, Frost Rocket up here. Like this seems like a standard like control like backup win con you right? think like, the f the white one or the blue one is um i don't know the blue one like is probably safer because it has ward three yeah and it's bigger so it'll close the game out quicker yeah maybe this one is better for that like the the reason i was thinking the blue one the white one is it has some form of evasion yeah but um, you know, this is only the the hall hall of the uh, the storm giants is only like one extra mana compared to the white one. Yeah, so yeah, that might be better. Like one of them is going to close out some games yeah. for a control deck. Uh, the black one, like I will probably be compelled to get a black one and a green one or two in foil because you so never maybe know. Bored. For the maybe board that is like a whole binder at this point, because you never know. That's right. Uh so the black one, three and a black becomes uh a three three with menace. And mm -hmm. whenever this creature attacks, you exile a card from defending players' graveyard. Yep. I mean that's kind of incidental graveyard hate. Yeah. So saw a little ability, gives you something to do with your mana. Like and then the green one is uh tap all of your lands in a green. <laughs> Make it big, make big. It, to make a big, big to attack with. Yep. Uh, and they idiot proofed it for you. X can't be zero. <laughs> you can't kill your land. 
I wonder, like that, to me, is just arena text. Oh, for sure. Right? So they, instead of having the, the warning come up, like, are you sure you want this to be zero? Mm-hmm. It's just like, it can't be zero. Yeah. It has to be something so you can't just, like, click through and stone ring yourself. Right. Um, I think they're all fine. Right? Like, they're not going to break into, like, you're not gonna play like Lair of the Hydra in Jund. Like it's no, not better sure. than Raging. It's not better than Raging Ravine. No. Right. But right, they could find again places in historic and you know pioneer like slightly lower form powered formats, mm-hmm. and particularly in like monocolored decks. Yeah. Right, where you don't care about like the fixing you would get from uh, a hissing quagmire or something. Yeah. So, no, I think they're all good. They're, they're like kind of at the right power level. Like, the, they're cool because they come in untapped early. So, if it's like the only card in your opening hand, you don't have to worry about slowing down, but then yeah. they still have some utility late game. Yeah. I mean, they do hurt. Like, most of the time, creature lands come into play tapped, period. Right. Right. So, like, the only ones that don't are the colorless ones, right? Mutavault yeah. and Faceless Haven. Yep. And, and uh, Crawling Barons. Crawling Barons. And I guess we have uh, uh, the OG Mistress Factory. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So the colorless ones usually come into play untapped. And even like, oh, gosh, uh, Treetop Village came into play tapped. Right. Yeah. Even the monocolored ones did. So the fact that these come into play untapped sometimes is a big boost. Yeah. So, no, I think these are all solid. Like they're, you know, they're not going to be like format, like, you know, all the way back to, you know, legacy format staples, but, you know, they can show up from time to time. Yeah, I think you'll see them once in a while. Okay, this is a format staple for all formats, <laughs> going all the way back to vintage. Let's go. Uh, Treasure Vault. Tap for a colorless. Mm-hmm. Uh, XX tap, sacrifice Treasure Vault, create X treasure tokens. That sucks. It's an artifact land. It's busted. It's an artifact land. It is busted. Yeah. So uh, the new affinity deck in modern Mm -hmm. actually cares about affinity. Sure. And it's playing a bunch of craptastic tapped artifact lands. Mm -hmm. This is an untapped artifact land. So they have, you have treasure vault and you have dark steel citadel. Yep. That's enough. That's enough. So it gets to play eight soul lands. That's good. Yeah. Um, also for formats on arena, um, the was it all that glitters cares oh, yeah. about artifacts, and this is one, and yeah. it makes more. It does. So like, if you get to a point game. in game where you're like, you know, within reach of killing somebody, you can, you know, just pop this thing and make three treasures and kill them. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you spend, you know, even if you spend like four mana, right, and yeah. make two treasures, that's one extra counter on an Arcbound Ravager. Yep. And you get from just sacking the vault by itself. Yep. So, yeah, no, this card will see play because it's just a soul land in any deck that has affinity for it in, yep. in it. I'm going to guess that this thing is going to be cheap, like on yeah. release. So I would absolutely pick up some foil copies, regular copies, whatever. Yeah. Um, because I think this thing's going to appreciate over time. So I would definitely pick up cheapies. I mean, even things like Gear Seeker Serpent, like mm-hmm. they, they print sometimes the affinity text without right. keywording in affinity yeah and it only takes like one or two of those cards to really like push an archetype even further i yeah. mean think about like a hollow one right just seemed like a random card and i ran in like a set and it's like oh it's just playable in all formats right it is a right. legacy and modern staple at this point right so it only takes like it's a vintage staple yeah yep yeah. Um, but like it only takes like one like random 
affinity card yeah to really like like make this card really desirable because it like pushes the affinity archetype over the top right and like we said last week uh this set is either going to sell all of the packs yeah or it's kamigawa right and if it's kamigawa getting these at like 50 cents or a dollar in five years they're ten dollars at least yeah i mean if this if this is actual kamigawa and these are 50 cents now in a couple of years these are going to be probably 50 dollar bills yeah um i don't so, know that this set's going to be kamigawa but i mean but my point being like it's either going to do really 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 well yeah or there's going to be a lot of people like you yeah that are like something doesn't taste right here Ick. yeah I don't want to engage with this. Yeah. All right. All right. So now we got ourselves some planeswalkers. Yeah. I don't, and I don't think we have to talk about all of these. Um, they're kind of weird. None of them, I don't think, are like what you would call like a traditional planeswalker. No. Um, they all do some kind of strange things. So are there any that kind of spoke to you during spoiler season or any that you want to highlight or did you just want to go through all uh, of them? Uh, well, people are super hyped for Grandmaster of Flowers. Yeah, so I don't think it's a good. White, two white white for a legendary planeswalker, Bahamut, with three loyalty. As long as it has seven or more loyalty counters on him, he's a 7-7 seven, seven dragon god creature with flying and indestructible. Yeah. Um, plus one target creature without first strike, double strike, or vigilance can't attack or block until your next turn. Mm -hmm. But just basically bubble something. Yeah, so it's kind of like uh, getting to the trials or Kiora. Yeah. And then plus one, search your library or graveyard for a card named Monk of the Open Hand. Flurry of Blows! Flurry uh, of Blows! <laughs> reveal it and put it into your hand if you search your library this way. Shuffle. Um, so the first plus one seems like so limited, a reasonable planeswalker ability. Right. The second one seems like you've got to put, like, you're going to sometimes draw your monk of the open hand. <laughs> and then what yeah. do you do? You have to play the, the the planeswalker beside it to stuff it back in your deck. Yeah. <laughs> you cast it. Um, so, like, didn't the first Nissa do this? Yes. Like Nissa Ravane would let you go tutor up Nissa's chosen. The 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 uh, the slightly racist Nissa, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um. So something I thought of is so he turns into a. Uh, a 7-7 seven, seven dragon. Mm -hmm. Usually when Gideon turns into a 5-5 five, five or a 4-4, four, four, yeah. it's this prevent all damage dealt to Gideon. Right. So if this is dealt combat damage, it removes loyalty counters. It does. So like, if you block with this nerd, he no longer is a dragon. Correct. Like, that's not very good. Like, he's good for one block? Right. No, I, I, I don't think this guy's very good. Everyone's talking about like, oh, like you have this big dragon. It's like, no, like if you attack with a 4-4 four, four and they block, it's right, back down to having three loyalty. Like if you play this on turn four, though, you have your big dragon on turn seven? If nothing bad ever happens, yes, you have right. him on seven. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not a fan of this card. No, I don't. I don't, I don't think it's great. I know I don't see where it how it fits. Yeah. Um so Morden Kanan is a six mana planeswalker with mm -hmm. a plus two that lets you draw two and then put a card from your hand on the bottom. Like, I don't know, is that good enough? Like a six mana planeswalker so. that like draws you a card. The no. minus is make like a big big dog illusion, which is yeah. fine. The number of cards in your hand. Yeah, but like I don't know, like, the reason, like, Six Mana Elspeth was good was because she made three one ones. Yeah, or right? Wrath the Board. Yeah. I mean, even, like, uh, 
Garrick that made two wolves like didn't see hardly any play. Right. Right. Like six mana for a planeswalker is a huge bar to get over. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think plus two draw two cards. No, I don't think so. It's good enough. Nope. I forgot this was even a card. Yeah, Lolth the Spider Queen. Uh, three black black for a four loyalty. Whenever it has a static ability, whenever a creature you control dies, you put a loyalty counter on Lolth because it has no plus abilities. Um, it has a zero. You draw a card and lose one life. Uh, minus three. You make two two one black spider tokens with menace and reach. Um, like we were talking about last week about bringing tokens with you. This is a good one to bring the tokens with you because you and your opponent are both going to forget that some empty sleeves on the table are 2-1 black spider tokens with menace and reach. And then uh, it has a negative eight. You get an emblem with whenever an opponent is dealt combat damage by one or more token or one or more creatures you control. If that player lost less than eight, eight life this turn, they lose life equal to the difference. So it's just going to guarantee that they lose eight life. Yes. Um, so what do you think about Lolf? I just said that Garrick was basically unplayable. Mm -hmm. And it's zero was make two wolves. And it's minus three was murder something, draw a card. Right. Now, it only got loyalty counters when a wolf died. Right. As opposed to any creature. But, like, this feels kind of like the same thing. Pretty similar. Where... Right, like the it goes down to one to make two nerds. Yeah, which is like Garrick stayed at like four. Yeah, to make right, and you just could like zero and make wolves, right, and just overrun the board with wolves and like this. Yeah, this just doesn't seem good. Yeah, but not great. It looks gonna get played. I mean, it's. Is one mana less than Big Lily? But think about like, like the Big Lily versus this. Like oh, I'd much rather play Dreadhorde General. Oh yeah, like Dreadhorde, like, and that didn't see a ton of play. Right. Right, and that was like ridiculous. Yeah. Like oh, like I just like can kind of wrath both boards, have a clean board, draw two cards. Yeah. And then start yes, please. pumping out the zombies, and this is like. You can play me and draw a card, yeah, or make two two ones, and then I'll be at one for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't see it being good. I could be wrong, but I don't see it. The uh, like the only thing that this has going for it is you like have the potential of ulting it when it comes into play. Like if you like. Like, if you have four nerds in play and you kill them all the same turn you cast this, mm -hmm. like, you can just neg eight and your opponent's on, like, a th basically three-turn clock mm -hmm. that they can't do anything about. Yeah, I don't know how you, like, make that happen. I guess, like, you sack a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, Priest of Forgotten Gods does two things mm -hmm. and gives you two mana towards you know, whatever else you're doing. Mm. Village rights, claim to firstborn. I don't know. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that your recto sacrifice deck wants a five drop, but no. But yeah, this this doesn't seem to like get there. No, I don't think so. All right. Is this is that everything? Oh, oh no, two, two more. Okay. The other two planeswalkers. I, to I totally forgot that the black one and the red one existed. Yeah. Like just totally, spaced. Yeah, like I knew Ellie Wick. I was like, yeah, I know that one. Yeah. I've played the blue one twice. Everyone's talking about the white one, the black and the red one. No recollection that these cards exist. <laughs> All right. So the, the red one is Zariel Archduke of Avernus. It's two red red for four loyalty. Uh plus one creatures you control get plus one plus zero oh, and gain haste till end of turn. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, zero, create a 1-1 one, one red devil with the devil text, which is when this creature dies, it deals one damage to something. 
And neg six, you get an en emblem with at the end of the first combat phase on your turn, untap target creature you control. After this phase, uh, there is an additional combat phase. And like you're not far off of the emblem when it comes down. So that's like for, a reasonable emblem to have for a foil like, for loyalty walker. Yeah, I mean, but you're not like going towards the emblem doesn't protect it at all. Right. Right. So like you zero make a devil, you're still three turns from ultimating. Yeah. Right. And like the the plus definitely does not want you to play defense. Stay back and block. Yeah. So I don't know yeah. how often you're gonna get to that emblem. That's right. True. It might just be this is like a four mana thing that like just gives every creature you play haste for the next like two turns till they're dead. Yeah. But again, it do it doesn't feel like it's enough. Yeah. Speaking of not enough. Oh man, this one's bad. So maybe we don't have to talk about it, but when your plus one is venture into the dungeon. Venture into the dungeon. Yeah. This is not yeah. good. No. And then you can neg two on your four loyalty planeswalker to find a creature card and put it into your hand. Yep. But Just if it's one. legendary, you get three life. Woohoo. So you paid four mana to like cast like I don't know two anticipates. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it only got you creatures. Yeah. Uh or a creature. And then uh Oh my gosh, I didn't realize how bad the ultimate was. Yeah, basically unplayable. Yes, you get an emblem with creatures you control, have trample and haste, and get plus two, plus two for each differently named dungeon you've completed. Right. So your creatures can only ever get plus six, plus six, which like should have won you the game already. And if you got through three dungeons, if right. you should have won the game two dungeons ago. Yeah, if you were allowed to just sit around and chill out and like just get through that many dungeons, you probably should have got around to winning the game. Right. I don't even know if Sparky would let me go through that many dungeons. <laughs> probably not. He'd, oh, he'd there concede. We there we go. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that maybe that should be a video. Is kids will Sparky let me get through three dungeons? <laughs> will Sparky concede? Yeah, so on one hand, like these planeswalkers. I don't think as a group are very good. No. On the other hand, I think I would rather that than Oko's and Teferi's. Yes. Right. Like I don't know where the like line is. Like I don't know. Is the uh, a line like uh, Angrath? I I actually really liked Angrath. But like in, like what I mean is like. This card is like playable, it has a purpose, yeah. but it's not format warping. Or like yep. six mana Varaska, mm -hmm. where it's like, yep. this is good. I feel like I'm getting paid for my six mana. It has a purpose. Yep. It can win a game, but it's not like just like soul crushing and awful. Yep. These like might be Elspeth. a little too safe. Uh, yeah, it's six mana Elspeth. I mean, six mana Elspeth kind of buried you, but like, well, right, but it's not like it's not to fairy buried you. Yeah, it, but it usually buried you out of control deck where you were already dead. Yeah. They just needed some, like, one ones to, like, finish the job. Yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't, like, Teferi where it was, like, I know I'm not winning this game, but nothing's happening here to make me lose either. Yeah. Um, yeah, these all kind of feel... They feel like... Uh, they kind of feel like the corset planeswalkers from like mm -hmm. a couple like a couple years ago, yep. where they were very narrow for like a specific type of deck. Right? Remember Lily the Undead or whatever? Yeah. All right. Touched by death. Yeah, whichever one like you know would let you like cast zombies from your graveyard. Yeah. And, yeah. Like it was very much like this goes in the zombie deck and the Sarkon that's like. I go in the dragon deck. Right. Right? And then, like, you know, then we just, like, lost our minds. Yeah. So, like, I think I'm fine with this. Like, I don't see any of these Planeswalkers really, like, truly seeing play. Yeah, and I'm okay either. with that. Mm -hmm. okay I, with I would kind of rather that they didn't see play and so that you didn't have to, like, 
play with Ellie Wick Tumblestrom in your modern deck? Like, yeah, can you imagine if, if Ellie Wick was Oko? I'm going to cast an Ellie Wick. <laughs> you just have to say Ellie Wick over and over and over again. Yeah. Like, one, if it was like one in a green for four yeah. loyalty planeswalker, <laughs> Ellie Wick. It's like, oh no, we've gone too far. Doesn't what matter how do? bad Vetrick in the dungeon is. Right. It's a two mana planeswalker that with four loyalty. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. It'll see play. Yeah. Um uh, all right, so I think that's all the cards we wanted to go over, right? That is all of the cards we we're gonna go over. Um real real quick, uh we always have our little arena spot. We don't always have something. Yeah. But I just wanna take a second and just be like, we can't no one can ever be happy. So I've heard like multiple times it was on uh gosh, it was oh I think it was on twitter somewhere and then like saffron all spent the whole like uh this whole like stream talking about oh man these animations aren't very good on these cards i would expect better animations from what i'm like well can we just not win like can like really stop? i didn't even notice the animations well i mean that's the point like why don't they have cool animations like uro and like questing piece and it's like can we oh. can we just ever be happy yeah. Can we just ever, ever, ever be happy? Like I've never played Arena and been like, oh man, I need like some sick animations. I what need her to come and blow my house down. <laughs> any hops, any plus, any blows your format down. That's um, right. Let, let, let me tell you the life cycle of animations. The first time, oh, that's neat. The second time, that's kind of cool. The third time, can I turn this off? <laughs> the fourth time, this is so annoying. Yeah. Like, okay. Like, I could see why they uh, maybe didn't put as much time into it because maybe they got a bunch of feedback that was like, desperately want to turn off the animations button. And maybe yeah. they were like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't like make the poor intern uh, not sleep for four weeks so he can yeah. have animations. Yeah. Since Dial it back a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, I'm like, I was just like, we can never be happy. No one can yeah. ever be satisfied. No one can just be like, oh, that was cool. <laughs> so with that, I think we have a podcast. We do. We have a show. We have a two and a half hour show. Yeah, it's a long one. It is. Um, so if you somehow think we missed a card, <laughs> or maybe you're like, super in on grandmaster funky flowers or whatever his name is yeah uh you can tweet us and tell us how wrong we are uh at casual tripod i look forward to everybody telling me how wrong i am on facebook at casual tryhard mtg and i look forward to reading all of the emails about how much you love this format that are sent to us at show at casual tryhard mtg.com as long as you guys use our TCG player affiliate link to buy your singles, tcg.casualtryhardmtg.com, um, or you sign up to be our patrons at patreon.com slash casualtryhardmtg. Maybe we could make a special like abuse, abuse, uh, patron only abuse channel in our Discord. We could. We can do that. I, I will We're make a room for our patrons where they can come berate me about how wrong my opinions are. I have big shoulders. I can take it. I promise. Um, yeah. If you want to hop in on that, there's a link to our Discord in the description, and there's links on social media as well. Please be nice to James. <laughs> or not. It's fine. Oh, man. <laughs> I guess maybe we'll catch some people at free release. <laughs> uh, I mean, you might. I won't. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Way to go, wizards. You broke him. <laughs> you broke me. <laughs> Good job. You look at a box. One through uh, one through nine. <laughs> you don't buy the box. <laughs> Ten through 19. You buy the box. <laughs> 20. You buy two boxes. James. <laughs> one. Excellent. I'm out. Four, 14 through 20. Just buy singles. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> All There's right. There's like four interesting cards. Just buy those. 
kissed by them. The rest of them are all bad or have bad mechanics on them. <laughs> At least we waited till the end of the two-hour podcast to really, really let the feelings flow there. Yeah, really let them rip. <laughs> let it go. All right. Yeah. That's a we'll podcast. catch you next week. <laughs> we'll catch you next week. Jeez. All right. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs>